for those of you who aren't aware, the Young Turks are a... Uh, what do they call themselves? They call themselves a progressive um, media organization. Um, hold on. But let's use their words for it. So, uh, so it's an American progressive news commentary show on YouTube. Thank you, Wikipedia. Um, so they're, they're just po they're podcasters and YouTubers that um, have political opinions online. Uh, similar to what I do. So people who don't really have uh, political careers so much as they comment commentate on the politics of the time. Um, they are well known for creating such wonderful figures such as Dave Rubin. Dave Rubin got his start on The Young Turks. Uh, and Jimmy Dore. Jimmy Dore got his start on The Young Turks. Um at the moment, we're seeing a potential uh, why I left the left movement again with Anna Kasparian and like, well, I guess we never, Cenk Hugo was never on the left, really. Um, his his job is there to just be like the, the angry dad character yelling at clouds, basically, as far as I've seen of his content. Um, but yeah, uh, over the last few days, uh, shit's kind of hit the fan. Anna's basically gone full white woman white woman mode to uh, attack um, uh, a black uh, content creator uh, who basically said what we all should have been saying this whole time uh, when it comes to Anna Kasparian. Like, um, where have we got this? This... This is the tweet that uh, where that you know started the whole thing. This was you know back in March. Um, Anna Kasparian um, uh, put out this tweet: "I'm a woman. Please don't ever refer to me as a person with a uterus, birthing person, or a person who menstruates. How do people not realize how degrading this is? You can support the transgender community without doing this shit." Um, so, like me, uh, obviously, I like to. My first th reaction to something like this is to try and be as nice as possible, which I ironically is like what the entire like reaction from most of uh, you know the the left wing commentators online, the YouTubers who are considered on the left, um, were, were doing. Like they they all were just like, yeah, I like we we love you, Anna, and everything you've done, but this ain't it. Um, basically, yeah, putting on the kitty gloves and, uh, protecting the white woman at the end of the day. That, I mean, that's what has, this has turned out to be, um, at the end of the day. Like, she's, she, she, she claims that she's not white when it suits her, and she claims she, she's a white woman now when it's, when, when she's getting attacked by a, um, when she's getting called out, I'm sorry, not attacked, called out for her bullshit by a uh, by not just a, a black uh, content creator, but like the entirety of the online left uh, are are fucking calling her shit out. She turns, she decides to turn around and attack a specific um, uh, black content creator uh, over all of this shit. Um, but yeah, this this is just transphobic at the end of the day. Um, she's not your mum, she's not your auntie, she's not your sister, she's not, like, your friend, she's not your workmate, she is a political commentator who knows better, who has said better than this in the past, um, she, she knows better, and, uh, we never should have given her the benefit of the doubt at the time, uh, because this whole thing has been basically a ploy to get attention, um, I'm the, I don't know if their numbers are struggling or whether they want to somehow like appeal to the right wing uh, in some sort of you know misguided attempt at centrism or like the 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 age old uh, stupid stupid um, the stupid tactic that never works of trying to appeal to the the fascists you you can't appeal to fascists like the only way to uh, deal with a fascist is um, the way that they will inevitably uh, deal with you. Um, that's that. That's just it. That's that's that. Um, yeah. Ah. Oh. 
I just realized that uh, none of my Wolfenstein games are installed. Oh well. Damn. Give me a short minute just to check some things. But yeah, I'm not sure I'll have the attention span for um, games as well as talking. Um, yeah, that's where it started. Um, re the, there's what this came what came out of this is basically the leftist mafia um and amongst other people like but like i from what i've watched the leftist mafia which uh, is made a made up of uh, oliumi um lance from the surfs the humanist report um uh, matt binder appears there and i think it's the the rational national also appears uh, on that show as well um, and they basically called called her out for it. I'm gonna find that one, find that one now. Um, see if I can find that one. This is a couple of months ago though, as well. <sighs> I think it was probably this one. So what's the next thing? Um, people want to talk about Anna Kasparian, or I don't oh know how to say her name. My. This turf this thing. another one. Dave. Dave. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have a bit of a debate on this one. Uh, All right, let's Dave, debate. Take it away. Take it away. Before we debate, oh. who is that? Well, <laughs> This here is Oleumi. Ole Oleumi. Um, oh yeah, this is back when Illuminati was uh, part of the leftist Marty F Mafia before she got uh, uh, before she uh, left the leftist Mafia. Um, that's a whole other controversy. Like, but like a completely different uh, ship. At the end of the day, yeah, I, I don't know much about that. That. Like from the start to me, it all it all seemed like Discord mod drama to me. And you know, like if I had the more time, I I you know, if I could do this full time, I would have loved to di deep dive into that and learn more. But um, yeah, that that is a rabbit hole of basically running through Discord logs and trying to figure out what's what and that sort of stuff. Um, <sighs> not not something that I have the time. <laughs> these days yeah that is a whole can of worms like uh i i'm still waiting for her to um respond to any of the allegations against her uh, in order to like you know actually fucking go somewhere with that but i think that she's trying to silently like did she she put out she put out that video, but that wasn't really responding to any of the allegations. I'm talking about since she put out the first video, like, she hasn't said anything about it, as far as I know. I don't, I'm not attached to Twitter, so I don't know if there's anything happened since then, but uh, it looks like she's wanting it to just quite not say anything about it and quietly let it go away, which, you know, it's pretty scummy, but pff, whatever. Um, da da da. I really want to find the part that where, oh my gosh. Ah, almost there. So this is, um... I'm gonna stop this dead in the tracks. This comment says, uh, Ole got famous off TYT, uh, boosting her rant against Kim. TYT is on the right side. Y'all being sensitive. Let me tell you something. Do not play with fucking me. Do not play with my track record. <laughs> I'm a bitch who's been on wow. John Oliver, The Breakfast Club. <laughs> Everybody named Mama AOC shouted me out on The Breakfast Club. I, they, they, <laughs> I don't you need to keep it fucking cute, baby. Keep it cute. I, don't, 
No, look at my YouTube comments. They're nice. <laughs> I saw people talking um, shit. Um, but but listen, yeah, Bender um, from the ropes. <laughs> I am. I am not shit. one of those. I am not one of those black people that you think you can like shame out of like make me feel like I'm not supposed to mention right. race or the way that race is a part of things because you. Well, I don't give a fuck. I spearhead correction i think the issue here mm. is that can you really judge anything i'm trying to find the one spot i'm but so who, sorry who is walking around calling you right also, right I, it's important to say i right. like i hate when we you know anna has very slickly recharacterized what 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 she what she did it's very you know and we're going along with the recharacterization she did not come out and like i don't like to be called that or whatever that was very much a public service announcement style right <laughs> With a whole declaration of why I don't see a call to everybody else's. I don't see it. I don't see why that's not degrading and dehumanizing. And you can be, you can support the trans community and none and not be a part of that shit. She gave, she literally presented people with a talking point. You know what I mean? Like, hey, mm -hmm. for something that like, this is bullshit. Hogwash. This level of like, <laughs> trying to slip that aside or whatever. That's one. Like. Oleumi was the first person to call it out for what it was. Like, it was a fucking PR stunt. Like, putting this tweet, putting this specifically, specifically this tweet out to, um, um, and, and leaving it up and doubling down and defending it and stuff like that. Like, it's not like, you know, your, your boomer parent, your boomer mother or grandmother putting a comment onto Facebook. Like, this is a public figure who knows better and who has said better in the past. Like, to, to they not only that, but they had, but at the time, at the time, they had transgender and um, other LGBT queer people uh, working at the TY, at TYT who spoke to them directly and tried to get them to understand um, the problems that they were causing. And, and again, I like that, but I'm gonna call this what it is. And and, and I don't want to. And for the record, you know, throw like I said, the, all the bail I'm a shooter. Like I, we should have all just listened to Oliumi. Like I, I, at the older I get, and the more things I see, like the more I just realize, yeah, we need to, we need to listen to the fuck, we need to fucking listen to the minorities in the room who are calling the shit out for what it is. And uh, Oliumi got did did not get um what she deserved out of this. And she was being fucking oh. nice. Here. She was being nice here. First She's Anna, not being Anna nice anymore. Came, became known to me when she covered me on TYT, me uh, defending uh, Elliot Page from being uh, dead named on. Um, mm. Rising, so yes, I acknowledge all the work she's done. But this is, and that's, like why, that this is and that's why, and that's why this is some some knowing bullshit, and I don't like the way um she's sidestepping it. And second of all, I want to say this, um, this is the way that, and I want to call this on what it is on the white woman. And out of all the people, out of all the people, um, let me just, let me see if I can find the tweet, um. She Here we go. I think this is it. This is it. Yeah, so so out of all of the people who criticized her at the time, um not even at the time as well. This is April. This is like a month later. And Anna comes along and um and uh fucking quote tweets Oliumi um over this this information like uh, to Very... mention those without like having to classify it as you know but you shouldn't get mad at her for this because of her history. No, I, I mean no one's mad at her for her history. I think it makes sense if you want her to change her mind and to understand what she did wrong because if it's just I just just want to stop there. Like, stop wasting energy on changing the minds of bigots. It is a waste of time. Like, stop. Spend your time loving the people who actually give a shit about you. Spend your time and energy and your life doing good things for people who are worth doing good things for don't don't waste one drop of sweat 
from someone who will immediately dismiss you the moment that they become uncomfortable with your identity. Fuck those people. They are a waste of time. They are a waste of time. Do not try and change minds. If you're on Twitter and you want to have a flame war, that's completely different. You know, like if, if I am all behind having some fun at other people's expense, as long as that is, as long as that is fun to you. Don't do it if it's not fun. It is fun to me to to get into arguments on Twitter and online. I I thrive on that bullshit. I am a I am a I am a bottom feeding uh, leftist piece of shit. But if you're going into an argument online with a bigot like Anna Kasparian or a bigot like Shank Huga or any number of other people. If your intent is to change their mind, I can tell you now, you cannot change anyone's mind. That is impossible. The only person that can change their mind is them choosing to change their mind. Because that's what this is. This is a choice. And Anna chose to post transphobic and racist tweets online doubling down on it, Chenk backing her up, and also platforming some absolutely transphobic news stories. Like, she, she, Anna Kasparian recently, um, brought up a story brought up, uh, that was, uh, a fake news story, uh, invented by, uh, what was his fucking name? O Ollie, Lo o Ollie London? A fucking racist piece of shit. The guy was so racist, he said he was going to get a um, penis reduction so that he could become a Korean. Like, what the fuck? What a piece of absolute shit. Pretended to go trans so that he could write a book about uh, detransitioning. What a piece of shit. They get uncomfy, uncomfy, they get uncomfy, like, immediately when you get, when they get you're a member of the LGBTQ community. Yes! Yes, like literally, Anna Kasparian has said before, like, so Anna's recently gone on a right wing uh, media tour to complain about the left. It's happening again. We've got another Jimmy Dore moment. This is another Dave Rubin moment. Like, the, the you know, the factory that produces backstabbing grifters is like, creating another one like the the factory has become the backstabbing grifter party like who's who is who is like surprised you know like it's created jimmy Dore, it's created dave rubin i'm 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 you know i have I, i'm very <sighs> i am very i'm gonna be very upset when hassan uh drops off you know because, you know, he, he was, he, 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 right now he is the good one. And like, for, it's, it's interesting watching his response to, um, to this whole, uh, controversy. Because I watched some of it, some, like some, uh, one of the major clips that, uh, came out recently. I think yesterday's stream that he probably talked about it for, apparently for about an hour or so. So it'd be interesting to find that, that and see what he says. But basically he spends all the time that I've seen in the clips, um, talking about the facts rather than focusing on the individual nature of this. So not talking about the influence that Anna has, not talking about the influence Cenk has, because I guess to Hassan, like Cenk is family, so what I said before is is kind of blurred lines. Like you know, Anna is not your your friend. Anna is not someone you know. Anna is not someone you're having a conversation with in the street. She's a political polit figure. To 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 Hassan, it'd be a bit harder to break away from the you know family work workmate relationship because he was on was Nazbol. You mean has? I think that's has. Hassan Piker. Hassan. You know Hassan. Hassan is like, he's the, he's the, he, I mean, yeah, he's got his problems, but like, generally speaking, he's probably the most, he, you know, he is the most, uh, ethical streamer out there at the moment.
like oh with with those kinds of numbers so like yeah um but yeah he 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 does he pushes back on the things that they've said and like immediately so but but um the because he doesn't uh call out Anna or Chank by name and say hey you guys are shit and stuff like that'll he will never um satisfy um uh people on the left which which is okay um Bare minimum shit. Like Oliumi is the if, is the voice context, of reason here. Like again, that's why it's important if you know her that you do include that context because it's <sighs> she has to understand that these these disagreements are coming from an honest place. Yeah, yeah. And we're not just doing it for clicks. Has is the two holes right? guy. That's so. No, of course. That, but that's, that's not the same. same. That's not the same though. That's not I the have same. to say, I have to say it. Oh my god, I have to say it. I like Anna, but I feel a little bit like this is the coddle the white lady hour. Um, and 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 you know why? And you know why? I thought this even earlier because before this, the majority report put out a thing too, and everybody else, and I was like, ah! I pressed the wrong button. I'm so sorry. I suck at this game. You know why? I thought this even earlier because before this, the majority report put out a thing too, and everybody else. And I was like, boy, everybody sure feels the need to trip over their fucking feet to come out to defend her for getting cooked when all of the people get cooked all the time. Nobody, I have, I have yet to watch a video of anybody defending me from getting fucking cooked. I've never seen it. I've never seen everybody come out. She has a lot of fucking bad takes, and then she gets cooked because she comes out right. unprovoked. She asked to be cooked. She got up today and she said, Twitter. Like the, those that that those bars bars absolutely like Anna she's talking Olivia right now is talking about how Anna purposefully left up a transphobic tweet knowing the damage that it could do. Um, it's also come out that Anna um is supportive. Like let's go to her page. Let's go to her. Um, uh, let me have a look. Do 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 do. She has a pin. A re. Oh, so she's recently retweeted. This is not a pinned tweet. Um, Jesse Singal, um, who is uh, who, who basically got uh, ran off of twin uh, Twitter at some stage for releasing medical documents of minors without permission, and also uh, posting a uh, like. An art, a news article, um, which basically was a love letter to conversion therapy and also platformed like a conversion therapist. Like Anna is in the sphere. She has been using terms like biological male, biological female, trans rights activists for at least a year now, and Chank also. Now, to the normie. That just sounds normal, like biological male, like, you know, they're just talking about the, you know, cis people, right? No. Biological male, biological female, and trans rights activist, TRA, trans activist, however you want to say it, these are turf dog whistles that are used in order to signal support for turf ideology while also trying to make people who are opposed to turf ideology gender critical ideology whatever you want to call it um crazy people like me to try and turn the public against people like me it's like the okay sing signal uh, symbol um that was used a couple of years ago for um a white power um dog whistle like it is specifically used in order to make people who are trying to fight for their fucking rights look crazy and look unreasonable to the general population like anna knows better she has been she has been told by people who are trans and know better she is she's she's heard she's heard all of these things she is not a sweet white white woman who needs to be protected she knows exactly what she's doing and we should have been on top of this at the time Oli Yumi was right she was spitting bars 100 percent where are we yes it's deleted tweet i want to make it clear she has yet to delete the fucking tweet she wait she hasn't has deleted it her. Her. you know why because at the end of the day she took the 106 000 likes she didn't even get rage 
right. She's gonna get it. Like, like, oh my god. I, I, I saw I I, 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 I saw that majority report video that went up. It's exactly what Emma said on the show earlier today. And when I heard Emma say it, I was like, you know, Emma put it great. And then I saw them put it up with the title that says Anna Kasparian is not anti trans. I'm like, that's not the point. Why are you putting that as the yeah, title of the not, video? That's not the point. Just, 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 they are both Chenk and Anna have been pushing anti transgender ideology for about a year now, at least a year. Uh, and in the past, the the birthing person argument, like, uh, I I really want to see if I can find it. Twenty sixth of April, twenty twenty two. Here at TYT, we recently got into a controversy. Uh, if you watch TYT Network, you're thinking, "Of course, when don't you?" Here's a twist, though, with our own audience and some of our own contributors. The video's still up as well. These guys are fucking. And some of our own contributors. So we're going to talk that through. Uh, before I bring on our guests, talk about it. Uh, I'm going to show you the original clip of Anna and I talking about this issue, uh, and then we'll uh, discuss. Let's watch. I'm speculating that she doesn't want to say mothers because yeah. mothers is gendered and she's worried yeah. about offending birthing people like birthing okay, people. Okay, really, bitch, they have a good not sleep. Even like, oh, I don't want to be inclusive and I don't want to think of you know transgender people. It's the phrasing like it just makes you sound like a weird object that like you're just you're a vessel and nothing more. Like birthing people just sounds weird. Like I, if I were pregnant and someone referred to me as a birthing person, I would feel like why why are you calling me that? You know what I'm saying? Like it's going to drive everyone away from you and it's going to lead to a situation where it's harder to win those rights that we're all fighting for, rather than easier to win. So uh, let me show you the tweet that started that whole uh, controversy in the first place, and then I'll bring in Sandy, talk about it. Uh, so it was from uh, Dr. Michelle Morrison. It said, the urgency of this moment is clear. Mortality rates of birthing people are too high, and babies born to black and Puerto Rican mothers in the city are three times more likely to die in their first year of life than babies. They're not saying uh, that we should call all mothers birthing people. They're saying if they want to be referred to as birthing people, then refer to them that way. Is that right? Or Correct. Um, we're not saying we're going to replace the word mother. And even the term birthing person or birthing people isn't even settled on. Personally, I use childbearer because, again, it's new language. It's going to be clumsy. Uh, the woman who tweeted that out, you know, she should have been consistent throughout. But when new language starts, it's always going to be sounding clumsy. The right will never buy into it because they wouldn't no matter what. And the way to get people in the center and the left to actually buy into it is to use it and normalize it. Because we've been through these transformations in language before. We used to only ever say police men, and then it changed to women, police women. But then that was getting confusing because you didn't know which gender they were, you were misgendering, so it became police officer. So it's a matter of trying to find a balance of words that don't necessarily sound clumsy, something that we can all kind of come on, come in on and agree with in the future. But since it is still newer terms, newer language coming up, there is no consensus yet on what those words should be. So Sandy, as, as we clarified in another show after that one, there's no issue with us referring to people in the way that they want to be referred, right? So if somebody mm -hmm. wants to be referred to as a birthing person or a childbearer as opposed to a mother, this, I have no issue with that at all, right? Um, but in the context of that tweet, Sandy, it seemed like she was referring to it as a general term for all mothers. And that's why I would say, at minimum, politically, I would not do that. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that it puts people off, they're confused by it, and, in, and, and especially conservatives, I mean, you're never conservatives anyway, but maybe conservative independents, right? Um, but yeah. They, they've gone into this before. They know better. It's just fucking... It's just... It's just... The and same bullshit. And the concern... It was an anti-trans take. The substance <laughs> of the viewpoint she is legitimized. You see what I'm saying? The conversation has just shifted to... defend. Like, everybody's conversation is about defending whether or not Anna is... Um, I'm just interested. I'm actually kind of funny. That was actually kind of funny. It wasn't what I was expecting. A year ago, they were still, like, trying to say that birthing person is somehow, like trying to erase women with not understanding at all. Um, I'm not her surprised. Her and blah, 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 rather than I guess they were like anti-trans for longer. Apparently, um, Oli Umi has said that she has receipts um, as well going back further. So it'll be interesting to see like a compilation of uh, the Young Turks uh, approach to transgender um, rights, I guess. Of what she put out and why that is um, offensive to legitimize and why it's a problem. For and being held responsible for it. 
Thank like, you. Like, That's the normalize, problem. Normalize large creators being called out and uh, being like, oh shit, I was wrong. Like, I do. Yeah, normalize large creators being called out. Yeah. Is this replying to? There we go. <laughs> Just now on the timeline, I scroll in and I see some girl tried to compare Angel Reese to Sid from Ice Age. And that's when I really realized, babe, y'all are some fucking haters, babe. Like, babe, I tell, listen. So this is, this is how Anna Kasparian, like, responded. Like, this is what she, like, originally, this is how she originally attacked Oluyumi. Haters. A completely, completely unrelated fucking so if video. I don't tell you Holy nothing shit. nothing else about fucking people, they are haters, babe. Like, if you spend time on the internet, you will know that the app out there going to hell yes yes sir bob yes sir bob going to hell okay let me tell y'all something the express train straight to hell gonna be booked it's going to be late it's going to be late because they're gonna get stopped and stalled because of the traffic because of the traffic it's gonna be slam packed booked to hell hell just now and so responds to this, oh, Ole, do you mean people who demand people cook their friends? They're, those kinds of haters. Like, on April the fucking 10th. This is a fucking month. This is... Okay, maybe not a full month. Wait, judge. April, yeah. Fucking three quarters of a month. Who gives a fucking shit? This is like, I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, what? What the fuck? What a way to fucking attack just a random um, black content creator online that you that you've you've like she was simmering for like several weeks before she posted that. Holy shit! My gosh! Have you been sitting on that link link for at least two weeks? What the fuck? amazing just 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 amazing like one of the reasons why i i call this racist is because well yeah yeah it's just 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 a crazy it's just crazy this, because this is the way that white women act that makes them people feel like you're not real allies and very much so uh, i want to speak to the bill burr joke of being in on the heist and not liking your cut because this is the top tippity top most privileged shit ever. Do you know how much shit, how many words, how many ways of classification exist in this society that I don't like as a black woman that you live with? Think I like ever, um, every time urban to me and black people, urban all the damn time. I hate criminal justice system. I hate law and order. I hate 90% of the shit that we say and things that are part of our fucking lexicon. But I don't get to make these this this level of declaration like oh it's so bothers you can you can want to be called by whatever you want to call in your life no one is stopping you from calling you a woman people refer to you as a woman you are a woman nothing is infringing upon you but the just but yeah you get the kind of thing you can't you get the kind of juice that that's just the fucking beginning of this whole thing it's just the fucking beginning i need to stop deleting deleting um these these videos the 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 Tabs. All right, hold on. Give me, give me a second. I need to reorganize this stuff.
sorry, I just need to, um, it's much easier to save links and stuff for, um, video uploads if I do it, like, while I'm streaming, and, uh, my, my, I have a burning need at all times to keep the amount of, uh, of tabs I have, um, like, to a complete minimum, so, like, I'm always just turning off, uh, turning off lights when I go through a room, or closing, uh, tabs all the time when I really need to save the links. The leftist white women coming out of shit, yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, it turns out that they've never really been, um, left-wing, this birthing person thing has come up, uh, before, I didn't realise how, you know, how much it's come up, but, uh, yeah. I just realized, um, yeah, it's just, it's just shit. Um, where are we going here? Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's continue, let's go. I just wanted to play another, another quote, quote from, um, Oliomi. Um, ah, you mean this one. It, it, it's stacked up. I have not seen the whole thing. I was going to play it. No, and that's what I've always said. This is a part. Of a deliberate play. I don't think she has ever I've just spent been, I've just spent the last uh, uh the the last hour um explaining the like what's what's going on like uh, in a nutshell if you've just arrived or you've just uh you know skipped to this part of the video when I if when and or if I upload it to YouTube because I, I have no time or energy these days um basically uh Anna uh, the, the young Turks uh, were transphobic. Uh, they got called out by the entire left. Anna Kasparian decided to target a single black woman uh, who criticized her. Um, and uh, yeah, that's where we're at right now. Princess Bubblegum just woke up. Yay! <laughs> this is kind of what I slept in. But I do, did, did put on makeup and, and, and shower and stuff. Yeah, like, I, I saw, I was watching Lance, uh, Lance's clip, um, of the interview, um, on, uh, Adam and Sitch, um, and I just, like, couldn't keep watching it, um, without, be, be, like, I, I didn't want to pre-watch because, like, I haven't heard so many lies, um, in such a short amount of time before from someone who claimed to be on the left it, it, it's fascinating has ever been about being offended by what any of us have ever said i think like not at all the brb by no means i don't we should have been listening to oliomi from the start like if you haven't already Oluran Olurinati. uh no relation If you're not subscribed already, like, fucking, she, she, she's fucking fire. Anna's been getting shit on by thousands and thousands and thousands of people, and more powerful and important commentators than us, people with bigger platforms, all these different things. She only, this is just, this is a ploy. This is an attention ploy. And I think, you know, I think it was very important for us to, like, talk about it, like, vent about it very transparently. Um, and also, though, give, you know, the opportunity. We're going to have Soul Bunny, Soul Bunny, Juniper, and Benny join us. Benny being one of the people who quit the Young Turks, I think the Humanist Report has also um, was was affiliated. But yeah, basically the Young Turks no longer has like um, LGBTQIA plus representation after this because they've all fucking quit. They don't want to be a part of a transphobic grifter network. But like, are you really surprised when the Young Turks created Dave Rubin? and jimmy Dore, like come on guys and also and also a millionaire socialist streamer oh my gosh what a grifter am i right um so they could talk about it and i communism was when no I'm house point, I'm, I'm going to, <clears throat> to sit back and let you kind of handle this my um my my queer folk <laughs> uh but yeah um I'm gonna like link all of these videos here. I think that um, this this video here is really good to watch. It's an hour long. I'm not gonna watch it here. Um, I've got this one here which I haven't watched. I'm interested to hear a little bit behind it. Nola for the win! Welcome back. Hey, how's it going? We talking racism and uh, grifting and uh, transphobia and how all of that intertwines. Um, and I think, oh my gosh. Oh, can I find it? I don't know if I'll be able to find it, but like, 
Benny did such an amazing job of describing, like, like in my title, the weaponizing of white womanhood. Oh, like, literally, so, like, I mean, I kind of talk about this a lot of the time, how, like, femininity is both, like, Bandit. infantilized and sexualized, and that combination in and of itself is, like, really gross and creepy and weird. But, like, it's, like, doubly so with trans women, where, like, any sort of, like, agency, like, is just kind of, like, categorically disregarded. And it just does fit in with, like, the broader narratives that people spread about trans people that is, like, we're all being, like, you know, tricked into it. You know, it's other people's influence, because, <laughs> heaven forbid, you have, like, not only a woman, but a woman that is, like, actively choosing femininity. Like, you know, how dare you just go about society in a way that is, like, you know, so much to like undermine patriarchy and the, the idea that maybe perhaps like you know i don't know not everybody wants to choose masculinity for their lives it's, it's interesting to simultaneously like vilify like villainize the trans community while also infantilizing right because you know they let them tell it it's like the trans community these big bad villains trying to you know yeah i've I never really thought about it like this but like as a trans as a trans person getting like in that, that infantilization um you know like you're, you're crazy you're not there's something wrong with you so like you need to be protected you need to, to you're not in control of your own decisions like that sort of thing is really interesting put trans ideology on you and influence your and uh, Ola Yumi has a really interesting thing to say later on during this during this whole um uh interview like talking about how um she she the the experience of white womanhood or womanhood has been uh denied to black women for such a long time time um those that infantilization and that um the desire to protect the white woman that 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 has not applied in the same way to the black community uh, and it's something that you know uh, yeah fucking you know black people have been denied personhood for so long so it's not surprising that um there's such an acceptance from black women uh, towards trans women and that, that i think that's beautiful and also sad at the same time but then at the same time the trans community is somehow being manipulated by the big bad like cis leftists that are like ah <laughs> so which is it they, they try yeah. to have it both ways and and something i mean I, this isn't an original thought but it, i feel like anna engaged in this quite a bit especially with um benny i feel like you highlighted this really well in the video that you posted about leaving tyt where a lot of these just air quote concerned like liberals or centrists when it comes to like trans issues will talk they'll refer to trans people as trans rights activists yeah they, they won't refer to us as like women uh, yeah trans right activist is a dog whistle it is the same uh, it is it is the same thing as saying uh law and order it is the same thing as uh as 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 it is the 14 words like it is saying it is trying to del it, it is a dog whistle to um signal um turf ideology while also um trying to downplay um you know words from people like me imagine white women complaining of black women hurting their chances of getting their politics across also uh, this bitch annika anna kasparian has said before that she doesn't consider herself white as well as saying that she considers herself a white armenian right she says i'm the, oh she says oh, i'm not a white woman and then when oliumi says something about white women suddenly anna's offended what 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 are you Anna? Are you are, are you like putting on your whiteness as a mask to protect yourself and to attack black women? Are you <laughs> I just I have no words for this. There's a book I'm wanting to read. There there is a book that I really want to read and then talk about. Um uh, it came up on one of Kaylin Conrad's videos about um the you know the transgender uh the, the the sorry gender critical um cult movement she is white as default but not when it favors her exactly and also she uses her whiteness as a weapon in order to attack black people and that is completely apparent from what this shit <sighs> um White Tears, Brown Scars by Ruby Hamad. So, uh, so yeah, called powerful and provocative, taking us uh, the 
Tristan, this explosive book of history and cultural criticism reveals how white feminism has been used as a weapon of white supremacy and patriarchy, deployed against black and indigenous women and people and and women of color. Like, yeah, how white feminism betrays women of color. Unfortunately, it's not available as an audiobook, otherwise I would have been listening to it already. Uh, but yeah, I am definitely fucking ordering this and uh, reading it. White passing and being white is largely the same thing because you won't be mistreated due to race if you're white passing. Yeah, like, because, you know, my question... So, like, I, I, I'm also feminine passing as well, so I, I get the benefits of um, white womanhood as well as being white. Um, it's not until, like, people, you know, take a closer look or hear me speak. But, yeah... Or trans people were always just trans rights activists, and that's how Anna referred to me too when she was engaging with me um, in her replies to me. Yeah, don't fucking trust anyone who uses law and order as an argument, who uses urban as an argument, ghettos, um, and don't trust anyone who says trans right activist or biological male, biological female. They're the term biological male and biological female, those terms are inherently transphobic. They are only used by gender critical cultists. They are used by people who are anti-trans in order to signal support to their, to their like-minded uh, members and also to... Um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to still trying to remember the world. This is all cultish language. There's another book that you should read called Cultish. Goes into the way that these uh, thought terminating cliches and uh, fuck, I can't remember what the word is. I'm terrible at this. Thought terminating. No, there's a thought terminating thought terminating cliche as well as a um, dog whistle. How these words are used. These words are used in order to delegitimize people who are fighting for their rights. This despise the TYT explanation that trans stuff isn't popular. Even if it wasn't, uh, that doesn't mean it wasn't the right thing. Martin Luther King Jr. was the most hated man in America when he was assassinated. That doesn't mean we should have wait waited on ending segregation. Have you seen the deleted tweet? The civil, the civil rights movement did not use the same strategies as the trans movement. They didn't barricade speakers they disagreed with in a classroom for three hours. They persuaded through non-violence and showing America their humanity. Lit this is... I, I, I'm not mincing words. She's a fucking racist. This is literally the Fox News standard. This is what white people do when they want to talk over or down to black people. They take the words of MLK and twist them. They talk about the civil rights movement. They, they fucking... Straight, straight white cis people do three things. They misrepresent MLK. They misrepresent the civil rights movement. And they misrepresent Stonewall. Like... Those three things in order to attack minorities. They they take minority movements and they use them as a cudgel to attack us. It's fucking disgusting. It is this is fucking disgusting and it is fucking racist. You racist. First I must, must confess. Speaking of the words of MLK, let's have a listen. That over the past few years I have been gravely disappointed with the white moderate. I have almost reached the regrettable conclusion that the Negro's great stumbling block in his stride toward freedom is not the white citizen's counselor or the Ku Klux Klaner, but the white moderate who is more devoted to order than to justice, who prefers a negative peace, which is the absence of tension, to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice who constantly says, I agree with you and the goal you seek, but I cannot agree with your methods of direct action, who paternalistically believes he can set the timetable for another man's freedom, who yep. lives by... The, the, I could just put a picture of Cenk Hugo here and it would be the, the same fucking thing. ...concept of time, and who constantly advises yep. the Negro 
to wait for a more convenient season. Shallow understanding from people of goodwill is more frustrating than absolute misunderstanding from people of ill will. Lukewarm yep. acceptance is much more bewildering than outright rejection. I had hoped that the white moderate would understand that law and order exists for the purpose of establishing justice and that when they fail in this purpose, they become the dangerously structured dams that block the flow of social progress. I had hoped that white moderates would understand that the present tension in the South is a necessary phase of the transition from an obnoxious negative peace in which the Negro passively accepted his unjust plight to a substantive and positive peace in which all men will respect the dignity and worth of human personality. Actually, we who engage in nonviolent direct action are not the creators of tension. We merely bring to the surface the hidden tension that is already alive. We bring it out in the open where it can be seen and dealt with, like a boil that can never be cured so long as it is covered up, but must be open with all its ugliness to the natural medicines of air and light. Injustice must be exposed with all the tension its exposure creates to the light of human conscience and the air of national opinion before it can be cured. To the Macedonian... Yeah. Cured. Can be cured. Just pause it there. There we go. Excerpt, Martin Luther King Jr. Excerpt from the letter from Birmingham Jail, written April 16th, 1963, published June 12th, 1963. Uh, in three minutes, Martin Luther King exposes people, the people who um, said to be non-violent. And Martin Luther King also said um, that the that riots are the is the language rioting is the language of the unheard. This is if if we are unheard, then rioting is all we can do. Like this is that is human nature. When you look at um, uh, children who are unable to communicate, oftentimes violence is the only way that they know how to communicate. Like I've spoken to um, friends who um, have uh, autism. Um, who have said that, that the violence is one of the easiest things that they um, have to understand un have to understand. Violence is just what happens when you silence someone, when you don't give people language, when you don't give them rights, when you don't give them freedom, when they, you don't give them love, acceptance and understanding. That's why we need to learn the actual history and not the whitewashing of MMLK, because they did it so more than and 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 also like this this speech this letter from the the letter from Birmingham jail uh, about the white moderates um absolutely destroys this anti woke bullshit the anti woke bullshit like we are not creating like um what was it they were saying about uh uh what is it fuck um critical race theory they were saying they, they were saying about uh, critical race theory in america that it was just making up problems no it is exposing the problems that are already there and if and honestly honestly um if you're watching this right now and you're made to feel uncomfortable about those things that are being exposed i think that you need to look to yourself than other people about what that means Without violence and disruptive pro pro protest, then we wouldn't have ended segregation. No, no. Like, people forget that um, that the only... I mean, like, this is the sad thing. The, the, the only reason that the civil rights movement was successful was because we, that there was a period in which um, the, uh, there was a danger of um, uh, GDP growth uh, outstripping production growth. They needed more workers. They needed to bring more people into the workforce, and also, and one of the ways that they could do that is by ending segregation. Um, that that's that's the that is the ultra cynical view of why the civil rights movement uh, succeeded. But in reality, it's not as simple as that. Um, there was a whole range of complicated factors which uh, allowed the civil rights movement to succeed, and one of those things was the violent protests that went on during that time.
Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination sparked uprisings in cities across America. This doesn't seem very peaceful, does it? In April 1968, civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. made his way to Memphis, Tennessee, where sanitation workers were striking for a pay rise with the support of local ministers. On April the 3rd, King delivered his I've Been to the Mountaintop speech and made plans for a march to be held on April 5th, but the evening of April the 4th, while at his lodgings at the Lorraine Motel, King was shot through the jaw by the CIA and FBI. Oh, sorry, no, it doesn't say that. Sorry, I'll scratch that. Uh, an hour later, he was pronounced dead at age 39. Long before the public had any answers as to the identity of the assassin, a man named James Earl Ray, who pled guilty to the murder in March 1969 and was sentenced to life in prison, despite questions about the involvement of groups like the FBI or the Mafia, the nation was swept up in a frenzy of grief and anger. When King's funeral was held the following Tuesday in Atlanta, tens of thousands of people gathered to watch the procession. Despite King's father expressing the family's preference for nonviolence, in the 10 days following King's death, nearly 200 cities experienced... <clears throat> yeah, looting is another one of those dog whistles as well, by the way. When, when, when white people do it, it's called scavenging. When black people do it, it's called looting. Look it up. Arson or sniper fire, and 54 of those cities saw more than $100,000 in property damage, as Peter Levy writes in The Great Uprising, Race Riots in Urban America... <laughs> there we go. Urban America, another dog whistle. Fucking hell. In the 1960s, during Holy Week... 1968, the United States experienced its greatest wave of social unrest since the Civil War. Around 3,500 people were injured, 43 people were killed, and 27,000 people were, were arrested. I'm just interested. So that's... So that... that that's, uh... Yeah... That's just under twice the amount of people um, who died during the Black Lives Matter protests. Just, just saying. Just saying. Around three and a half thousand... Yep, we're going through that already. Local and state governments and President Lyndon Johnson would deploy a collective total of 58,000 National Guardsmen and Army troops to assist law enforcement officers in quelling the violence. King's death wasn't the only factor at play in the massive protests. Just weeks earlier, an 11-member commission established by Lin President Lyndon B. Johnson had released its investigation of the 1967 race riots in a document called the Kerner Report, which provided broad explanations for the deadly upheavals. Holy Week got some laws passed. MLK was pushing for about um, housing discrimination. Yeah. But we don't talk about the successes of... Uh, social movements. We only attribute those successes to um, the capitalist overlords uh, for passing those laws. You know, the people who pass those laws get the get the get um, all the credit for that, and not the people who gave their lives protesting, not the 43 people who died. Um, and 27,000 people arrested uh, for uh, the protest. Like, the, the real social movement does not get any credit. It only gets, um, only its failures get any credit. But yeah. So the Kerner Port uh, provided broad explanations for the deadly upheavals. Segregation and poverty have created in the racial ghetto a destructive environment totally unknown to most white Americans. It's still that way now as well. This is, this is, fuck. This is almost like, fucking hell, this is almost 60 years. Almost 60 years later. And it's still the same. Fuck me. There we go, some pictures of the, the damage and the police on the road. Oh look, it's a target.
Yeah. I won't read the whole thing because uh, I won't bore, bore you with that. But uh, yeah. I've been silent for the past 90 days because of uh, some statements I made concerning the president of the United States, uh, which were distorted. They were distorted. And yes. And what did you say, Malcolm? Well, I said the same thing that everybody says that uh, his assassination was the result of the climate of hate. But only, I, not... only, only I said the chickens came home to roost, and which means the same thing. You did not say that you were glad the president was killed. No, that's what the press said. Uh -huh. What would I look like saying that I'm glad the president was killed? Malcolm, this is your first public statement in that 90-day period, is it not? We have very short my memories. Mind, 90 days. That's why I'm talking so fast and so hard. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you feel, however, that uh, that we're making progress in, in this country no, and worldwide? No, no, no. I'm, I, I will never say that progress is being made. If you stick a knife in my back nine inches and pull it out six inches, there's no progress. Mm -hmm. If you pull it all the way out, that's not progress. The progress is healing the wound that the blow, that the blow made. You have they no won't even admit the knife is there. That was Malcolm X, another man who was uh, allegedly murdered by the American government. Important figures to look at when we're talking about white feminism and the way that white supremacy is used as a cudgel. Like the these the the the, the these white moderates. Like Anna Kasparian and Chuck Hugo are always talking about how um, we're being too violent, we're being too, uh, you know, loud, and and people aren't going to like our message. I don't give a fuck if you like my message or not. It's the fucking truth. Trans people are fucking dying. Black people are fucking suffering. Deal with it. If that makes you sad, do something about it. If not, get out of the fucking way and shut the fuck up. Like, paraphrasing Oliumi, you would have done less damage if you just shut the fuck up to trans people's rights. Fucking hell. Um, I would not be surprised. I, I am aware that she's a, she's very much a NIMBY. Um, yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah, let's uh, find out. We, we, we've we just finished our introduction of all of these points. <laughs> what is that? How, how long is that? That's an hour or two hours? What is that? Oh, that's an hour. Eh, that's not too bad. An hour into it. All right. In case it wasn't obvious from the... This is Benny Carollo. Um, they, uh, they, they were one of the presenters on uh, as part of the Young Turks. Um, oh yeah, fun fact as well. The Young Turks were, um, the, like, that That was named after, like, a genocidal group. Like, I don't, I still don't understand the, the, I, I would love for someone to explain to me, like, why that's okay to call yourself that. I, I, I never understood that, but, like, whatever, whatever. Uh, I don't know. The title of this video, I'm done with TYT. Now, before we get into like everything about this, this isn't about all of the hosts. There are actually a ton of people at TYT that I think are genuinely cool people. This is mostly about Jank and Anna. But of course, since like they're the people that are like the big names on the network and Jank kind of like owns the company, it's a pretty big deal when they do something like, I don't know, become incredibly transphobic and start what appears to be a ridiculous right-wing grift. I mean, literally everything from the things that they said about homeless people to the stuff that they said about abolitionists and their general sort of like refusal to hear the people that are criticizing them and saying, no, this is what people are actually trying to say. Uh, you're not really hearing what we're saying or you're, you're not listening. Now, we're not going to focus on literally all of the right-wing things that they've been doing lately, especially in the past year. They've done this pivot where they go after prison abolitionists, people who say defund the police, homeless people, and anybody that they think is a radical left. Because, you know, doing the enlightened centrist thing is really a smart move in this year, 2020. Right, I still got that calendar right. Uh, no, we're mostly gonna be focusing on their transphobia, which they have been escalating. I mean, it's a success. It's a successful thing to do if you're trying to make money rapidly, which I guess is something that like you know, like them being the moderate, moderate white, the white moderates uh, are just they're, they're going to make money on they're going they're, they're just they're just trying to secure the bag at this point. I I, I you know what? I don't. I don't give a fuck if it turns out that they're just dumb or not. Like at this point, I'm calling the calling them what they are. Um, calling it as I see it. They're just fucking grifting. They just want to make money. They just want to make money. And do you know what? Do you know what? Like, just gonna pause this for a second. Do you know what really fucking pisses me off about this whole thing is their argument 
for throwing trans people under the bus at the moment basically boils down to they want a Democrat to get be elected. Bitch, trans people don't just exist in America. How is getting a Democrat elected going to help people in Uganda who are trying to fucking escape right now? How is spreading this bullshit to other countries? Like, it does not matter in my country of Australia whether you have a Democratic president or a Republican president. That does not affect my rights one bit. But do you know what does affect my rights and my livelihood? This culture of transphobia, which is being spread from your country, which is being allowed to spread from your country to other places. The funding that your fundamentalist Christians groups give to other countries to enact transphobic, homophobic laws, which directly harm us that is what harms that that is that is what affects me that is what affects people outside of america like we do not give a fuck whether you have a democrat we give a fuck what you are spreading this fucking toxic spread of hate which has come across to my country where I see proud boys walking around. I see three percenter patches in my fucking city that you sent over from your country. That is what I care about. I don't give a fuck about your elections. Everybody really predicted what happened starting, I think about six months ago, four months ago, when Anna Kasparian put out a tweet complaining about the use of the term birthing person, which is really, really funny because she kept on talking about how like it erases women and it, it just it minimizes womanhood down to just body parts except for it literally doesn't everybody very immediately pointed out that that's a silly thing to say that in fact thinking that the term women and birthing person are completely interchangeable actually does reduce women to body parts and what precipitated this is even more silly because it was originally in reference to aoc and other politicians using the term when they're talking about abortion rights and i don't know if you know this but abortion rights are pretty specific to people with uteruses who are capable it's also interesting as well, like, throughout this whole debate, it's like, we've got white women who are basically giving up their rights by attacking trans people. Like, the, the this attack on trans people, and especially trans women, like, because of the bathroom bills and all of those sort of things, it's all interconnected. Like, they are trying to... They are trying to police womanhood. They are wanting to make it... to basically police women and who has access to womanhood. This affects black women. This, uh, this, this affects BIPOC women. This affects white women. Like, we have seen the results of this bullshit. We have seen the results of this shit. Um, in uh, the Olympics already. Like, we have a cis woman who was uh, born... Uh, cis woman, um, who's a black woman, um, fucking banned from um, the sport that she was playing because of laws designed to oppress trans women and to regulate what a woman is. Uh, you, you are throwing yourselves under the bus, white women, I'm talking to you, you are throwing yourselves under the bus in the same way that LGB Alliance is throwing themselves under the bus when they attack trans people's rights. We're just a boogeyman. To, to be attacked in order to police women's bodies. And that's what it is at the end of the day. ...of having children. And so the term birthing person is a pretty useful term to be narrow enough to be specific but also cover all of the relevant people. And that's why politicians have been using it in that context. Since posting the original tweet, <laughs> it's really keep going back and forth yeah. whenever they hear that argument. Basically, if there's somebody reasonable in the room with them saying why the term birthing person might be used, then they're like, yeah, I guess it makes sense in that context, but I just don't like it. Uh, but when somebody reasonable isn't around, then they just go and complain about the term birthing person again. And that really is why so many people predicted that they were going to go into this extreme turf pipeline, because, of course, that's a very common starting point right there. The trans people are erasing women. Oh my god. But then everything escalated when they decided to talk about trans the thing is, though, like, it has been um, pretty consistent when you look at uh, Anna Kasparian. Like, um, she's she's been following, um, uh, what the fuck's his name? She has been following... She 
Yeah, she's been following Jesse Singal. Oh, she's not following them anymore. Okay. Oh no, wait. That's that. That only shows who who I follow. Who's following him? She's been following him and talking about this for over a year now. Um, a an a known transphobe. Um, who basically yeah blockedreporter.org who basically has made it their um brand to uh, shit on trans people. So yeah. People in sports, not, which is a very new. common thing that a lot of cisgender people like to complain about because they don't understand how hormones work. And instead of attempting to try and get any type of understanding, they just want to sit and argue about their Go assumptions Scala. about how they think hormones should work. They come in with all of these assumptions about biological males and think that there's some sort of magic secret advantage that just exists persistently, regardless as to what hormones are literally dictating what your body is doing at the time. And that's where I came in. And I started uh, tweeting at some of the hosts, saying that, hey, you're wrong about this, that, or the other thing. You're missing these details. Hey, you are literally just being transphobic right now. I even reached out to people within the network to say, like, hey, I would like to maybe sit down with Jenkins. Maybe even have an on-air conversation where I could talk about how right all back. this stuff actually works. You know, I may not be a doctor, but I like to think that in my master's degree in biotechnology and my experience literally being a trans person, who, by the way, most trans people will do a ton of research about hormones before they get on them because a lot of doctors don't really know that much about it. So that's actually something that I did where I spent a ton of time like reading through like research papers about what would be like the best for my transition and how it go and things like that. So I like to think with my background, with some experience in biology and, you know, reading a ton about how specifically hormone replacement therapy works for trans women like myself, I might know a thing or two about all of these things. And I figured, hey, if Jank doesn't know about this, maybe. You know what makes me so tired? Like, uh, this is only a small complaint because I do actually love debunking things and to uh, look at arguments and try and talk about them. This is one of the things I really love. But when I think back over all of the studies that I've read in order to, like, advocate for my own medical needs, I just feel exhausted. I can't imagine, like, it, 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 I, I enjoy looking at uh, these things and researching. I don't have the time or energy for it as much anymore. But I just think of some teenager or, like, scratch that, maybe, like, a 10 or 11-year-old who's, fa who's faced with this shit and has n had no tools. He doesn't have the tools that I was gifted in order to advocate for themselves, to learn about, you know, re read an academic paper for one thing. And they're just fucking alone. It's just, I, I just wish that, I just wish that, like, I didn't have to advocate for my own rights. I wish that they didn't have to advocate for their own rights because that's where we're putting children right now. They're being forced to, like, educate themselves and learn for themselves. And they, and in America at least, they're trying to, and even there's been attempts in Australia as well to, like, ban books in order that people, that kids are trying to. Um, get their hands on in order to learn more about what makes them them. Fucking hell. The latest one with the, what is it, Gender Queer? That's another book I need to get. It's a graphic novel. And it's a beautiful book from what I've heard about, like, someone who's non-binary and, um, and also asexual. And, and he doesn't like sex. And apparently that's sexualizing kids. How, how do you do these mental gymnastics? I don't fucking know. Yeah. I mean, I mean that's, that, is, that is one of the steps of genocide as well, which is just fucking insane. Like, yeah. Yeah. That would make me, you know, suicidal, you know? That, that, that if I was 10 years old and dealing with this shit right now, Wouldn't have survived that. <laughs> It'd be interesting for him to learn. But with that, though, he wasn't really interested in having an on-air conversation because, you know, he seemed pretty intense on not changing his mind, but he was open to having a phone conversation. So I handed it to him on that. Like, yeah, great. So we had a chat over the phone. Now, obviously, I'm not going to get into the details of literally every single thing that we talked about. I'm just going to give you a brief synopsis because that's really all that's important. And there are two main sticking points that I really want to touch on that happened within that phone call that I think were really a sign of, like, how far things were going to go and honestly how much further things might go from here still. The first sticking point was Jenk seemed convinced of this idea that I'm living in some sort of bubble. They've even said it on the air that people fighting for trans rights are all living in some sort of bubble. The problem with that is I have a lot of random trans people 
people from a ton of different political perspectives that would like reach out to me about like, hey, how are things going at TYT? Or hey, I'm constantly disagreeing with other trans people. Like I've literally got, I've literally gone on to had had debates with pe with uh, other trans people about um about Palestine and Israel. I I've had uh, talks with um uh, other trans people about you know my representation on some issues which I wasn't um, privy to at the time. Like we disagree. Like, it's like they think that we're both... It's it's this contradiction. They think that we're both some sort of, like, hive mind in a bubble, while at the same time, we're all arguing with each other all the time. Like, they don't know, because they're in the fucking bubble! There is no greater echo chamber to be trapped in than money. Chenk and Anna are trapped in a money bubble. They are other people's livelihoods so they i mean like props to benny for standing up and trying to talk some sense into them because that's one of the hardest things to do why do you think that people like elon musk and uh, jeff bezos think that they're attractive people you know because no one's going to tell them the fucking truth because that's their paycheck Hey, you're really inspiring. You know, stuff like that. And I also have, like, a decent circle of friends and family, many of which who are sort of all over the place politically. I told Jenk very specifically, you know I have friends that are, like, big Joe Biden fans, right? Like, they are theoretically to your political right. His reaction to that was quite literally laughter, which I just thought was, like, so hilarious. And he just kind of wouldn't believe. He's like, no, 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 you're, you're in a bubble. You're in a bubble. And I kept pressing. I was like, no, Jenk, you don't understand. I matched with a random person on Tinder, and the first thing that they started talking to me about is how transphobic TYT has been lately. Because I think that they had just kind of figured out who I was. And Jenk was like, no, no, see, you're living in a bubble. And it's like, yeah, okay, buddy, that completely random person I matched with on Tinder is just part of the bubble that I'm magically living in. But really- Wait, was Benny in the army? Huh. I don't want to go into that. That, 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 that was, that, that, that was a controversy that happened last week that I was, that I'm staying far away from because I know some people who have been involved in that and I- refuse to make content out of them. That kind of gave me the vibe of like, oh, Jenk really thinks that like every trans person is part of some sort of ideology, that we're of like a strict like political viewpoint, um, and that we don't just exist as like a type of person that exists, you know? It really did seem like Jenk was of the mind that... But like my, my, my stance on the military is that, um, that yeah, I don't, don't, just don't join the military. Just don't join it. Just don't. Um, don't defend it. Don't defend being in it. That, that's it. That's it. That's all I'm going to fucking say. To be transgender is to subscribe to a very specific political viewpoint, which I don't know if you know this, but that's actually something that the like most unhinged transphobes are like spewing as conspiracy theories and stuff like that. They're like these trans rights activists are all part of this strict ideological group and they're infecting people with this radical gender ideology is literally what like these unhinged right wingers are saying. But it does kind of seem. And, and that sounds that sounds ridiculous. But I, like I say, I'm a truck driver. I work with salt of the earth, blue collar workers day to day. And I'm very open about what I talk about. Um, I'm also baby's first trans to a lot of people because I'm so openly trans and so like sociable and easy to talk to about these issues. I am the trans person that cis people go to to ask questions about trans people, right? That in my day to day life, that that's, 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 the position that I found myself in, um, and it is a position which is tiring, but since it's kind of enjoyable to me, it's something that I do. <laughs> That's not what they say, not those words, but like, um, when it comes to this sort of rhetoric, like the gender ideology, the dog whistles, all of those things are coming across. That they are seeping over your borders from America to Australia. Like, I am literally on the other side of the fucking planet from you. Like, if you're in Maryland, if you're in Maryland right now, literally, I am on the direct opposite side of the planet to where you are right now. And we're getting that. I have workmates who ask me questions about this stuff because it's stuff that they've heard about on Facebook. It's stuff they've heard about on social media. Like, it's stuff that concerns them. Like, oh, I have kids and I don't want them to be groomed. And and that 
narrative has come across. I have had people who've said to me, people who are otherwise awesome blokes, awesome blokes with their heads screwed on correctly, will have... The most interesting thing is, when I have conversations with these people, devoid of buzzwords and dog whistles, they are all fucking socialist. Let me tell you here, everyone's fucking socialist. If you strip everything of dog whistles and ideology and just talk about the basic socialist issues, everyone's for those things. Everyone loves that shit. But these words, biological male, biological female, uh, woke, I have people who are otherwise agreeable to socialist uh, uh, socialist systems who will tell me that they think DeSantis is a great guy because he's standing up for parents' rights. Like, that is how pervasive this bullshit is. You need to understand that thing. people like Anna Kasparian and Cenk Yuga have fucking power to spread this culture war nonsense. People want to live comfortably and what most want others to be helped too, as long as they have their needs met too. I need to find you a thing about the studies of what happens when there's an apocalyptic disaster. Um, yeah, the if you're wanting to find studies into that, look at Hurricane Katrina. And uh, just in your head, um, swap the word looting and pillaging with um, uh, mutual aid and scavenging. That's what happens in an apocalypse. People help each other. Like, quite literally, during Hurricane Katrina... No, during the, one of the Black Lives Matter protests, right? Where it did get violent. There was a group of people who broke into a pharmacy because they knew the pharmacy was going to be closed for an extended period of time. They, they took the medications and they distributed the medications to people who needed them. That is what the news calls looting and pillaging. No, that is mutual aid. That is giving people what they need when they need it. We, we all want to be communist, but because we're trapped, we have built a system over millennia that has trapped us with these ideas um, of where we can solve everything if we're just moral because everyone's moral right well yes most people are but the thing is people who aren't who don't have those same morals and wish to impose morals on other people are the kinds of people who will try and get into positions in power of power in order to push those things on others it's a very small amount of people who are fucking shit up for the rest of us taking advantage of the kindness of strangers that's what this is that's like, capitalism. Like, it's just kind of in that camp of like, oh, if you're trans, you must by definition be like some sort of radical leftist. You know, clearly like not connecting the dots. But I have a great, done randomly, I have an absolute great love of uh, survival games. And while that is not always the case, that is often the case. People have more fun when they're working together. People like Caitlyn Jenner or Blair White existing, which honestly was just really, really it's frustrating. It's just selfish sentiments, amoral garbage because... for most people. Yeah, I mean... I understand. I, 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 I guess, I, I guess, yeah, I see that as well. There is a lot of selfishness there, but I see that as, like, most of the selfish things that people say and do, I've found can be attributed to a lot of conservative upbringing, like, a result of what they've been told about the world that they believe, because that's just how it's always been, like, it is absolutely um, utopian thinking, but if we lived in a different system, I don't believe that that selfishness would be as prevalent. I want to live in a world where selfishness is used in a positive way, and I believe that that can happen because you can be altruistic in a selfish way because if it benefits you, and you know that it benefits you, you're, and you're a narcissist, like, you're going to do that thing. If, if the, what we need to do is remove opportunities for selfishness to become damaging to society, and that's done through material 
through uh, dialectical materialism and Marxism. The people that are in my circle of friends are people who like, literally have been games in their different, lives yeah. and people who literally are making like ridiculous amounts of money. I have a pretty broad circle, you know, something that kind of happens sometimes when you're like a polyamorous trans woman that's like a little bit popular on the internet. It turns out that you can build a pretty wide circle of people from like different perspectives and backgrounds and stuff. I know, what a shocker. But then there's the other part King that missed. was like even more disturbing, which was I pointed out something that Anna had said on the air. Where I was like, hey, Anna said this bit about doctors giving hormone therapy to children. If I if I if I was put in control of the world, I would spend every hour of my day working to make sure that neither I or anyone else could ever be in that position again. Because they were afraid of being called transphobic. And I was very clear. I was like, you know that's not happening, right? Like, you know that that isn't happening. And yeah. Jenks' response was, you know, I don't know. See, I could see it happening, though. And I'm like, no, but you couldn't. Because you know if that actually did happen, that would be medical malpractice, and it would be like a federal case to just give kids hormone replacement therapy because you didn't want to seem transphobic? That's ridiculous. On its face is ridiculous. Anybody who knows anything about politics would know that not only would that be a federal case, but it would be like national headlines. Every single newspaper would turn that into the biggest story for months. I mean, literally, the biggest story transphobes have had for the past two months is Dylan Mulvaney being on a can of Budweiser. So do you think that they really wouldn't make it national headlines if even if- the fact the fact that I have workmates who have heard the name D Dylan Mulvaney is just fucking absurd to me. If it just happened once, but no, Jenks still doubled down. It's like I don't know, I could see that happening, and it's like great. We have somebody who is like the head of a news network who is like basing political opinions off of things that he could see happening. Like what a wonderful position to be in at this point. Like the real brilliant five head political take right there. You know, I could imagine the scenario, and that really says something about society, doesn't it? <laughs> And that had to be one of the most unhinged parts of that phone call. But whatever. I sent him some research papers about trans people in sports that went into detail pretty clearly about like, hey, there's no evidence that there's any reason to discriminate against trans people in sports. And that was yeah. like the conclusion. Like, the, there is none. There is no evidence. Like, I, I the, the, there's no debate over that right now. Like, if you want to debate that with me, then bring up something which shows that there is... Act Don't bring me fucking papers on, like, differences between different biologies. Bring me, like, actual um, surveys and statistics which go into how trans people are winning at everything. Like, do that first. That, that I'm not interested in debating the biological science uh, of it because the results are clear the results of people trans people being in sports are clear like there is no advantage to being transgender in sports there just isn't the, the, this isn't a debate between you know people who think that there isn't and think people think that there is there's no like debate that, no no the, the, there is people who are correct and people who are wrong demonstrably wrong okay you cannot fucking show you ha you are unable to show me any evidence of trans people having advantages in sports um and you can't do that by showing me papers written written in the 1960s when uh, eugenics was still <sighs> not completely eradicated from the fields of biology and psychology you know like you can't do that I'm not interested in it. ...illusion that it came to pretty firmly, right? Hey, there's no evidence that y we should discriminate against trans people. Can you give me a point to argue, like something on your side that's biologically based? Sure. I mean, like, there... The thing is, Nola, like... There is a lot of... Re there's a lot of ways to argue the case for trans people in sports from a biological perspective because it's such a complicated issue and there are so many different things to, to look at, like bone density. Bone density in sports changes weight ranges, and the way that we're classified changes uh, the amount the amount that you can like gain muscle mass on that sort of bone weight changes that affects the speed and all of these sort of things. It's bodies are fucking complicated, and and you and and it's it's so it's like saying that the the solution to our, all of our problems is just to be communist. And then not talking about all of the interconnected things which come along with that. There are so many different reasons why trans women in trans people in general in sports is is not a bad thing. And you can you can argue that from a biological perspective, but because it's so complicated, if you're in an arena debating this thing with someone live, they can just go from one point to another pick up another point, pick up another point, and then you spend, you spend so much time debunking it that people think that there are two sides to this opinion when there aren't.
That's why my position on trans women in sports is when you can show me that trans people are winning every gold medal and outperforming every cis person, then we can have a conversation. But there is no evidence that that is the case. That's all we need. We don't need to get into the nitty gritty of biological arguments because at the end of the day, the results of trans people in sports are already clear. There is no problem with that. It's like debating a problem that doesn't exist in order to make the wrong conclusion, the demonstrably wrong conclusion seem relevant in ways that it never was. Like climate change denial. Like giving a platform to people who deny climate change. You can spend an hour or two debating these people, but what you've done is showing that there's two sides between an issue at the end of the day. I'm not saying that, like, I'm not doing, like, a, a deplatforming argument for these things. I'm just saying, like, it's an easy argument to win, and, like, it's an, it, it, for me, it's a waste of energy to get into the nitty-gritty of the biological science, because the, peop- the person that you're debating with over the biology of women in trans sport, or like trans people in women's sports or like in sports in general. Um, so if you're concerned about biological advantages, there's a reason that 60% of all professional athletes in more sports are born in the same month because of the cutoff date to participate. Yeah, 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 yeah. A- age, age is a huge thing, yeah. This is what I mean. This is, Nola, this is exactly what I mean. You can also make an argument for money as well. Like, um, if we're talking about um, sports and what actually does benefit people in sports, it's it's more attached to money than uh, anything else as well. Like, you've got money, you've got, you've got the month that you're born in, you've got, like, so many of these things. When at the end of the day, all you need to say is, prove to me that there's a problem. Because if you can't prove to me that there's a problem in the first place, why would I ever bother wasting my energy on you? You are not worth my time if you think that you can debate me, debate with me on trans women in sports because you have not read as much as I have. You don't understand the biology. And I'm not talking to you, Nola, by the way. I'm talking to a... Right now I'm talking to a, a hypothetical uh, conservative who wants to debate me on uh, trans women in sports. You do not understand the studies that you're trying to reference. Um, you do not understand any of the bio- biology. You are using the incorrect language. You don't even understand the concept of objectivity versus subjectivity why do you think that you could ever be on my fucking level yeah we don't have enough data for trans people in sports the only thing we notice is trans women might have a slight advantage in marathon walking but again not enough data and at the end of the day at the end of the day let's pull back even further from you can't prove from my point of 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 trying to uh, prove an improvable thing um At the end of the day, this trans women in sports argument hinges on the idea that trans women aren't women. And just to get into a debate over that is conceding that point. Because if you don't, if you think that trans women are women, then women in, then trans people performing in sports shouldn't matter to you. Any advantage they have or disadvantage from being born and identify, identified at birth as a different gender from one that they identify when they perform um, is outing you as not believing that trans women are women. Uh, and that's going to be a hard pill to swallow for most people. Yeah, why do they even care? No one watches swim sports. Yeah, I know, right? It's just yeah, unless it's um unless it's volleyball here in Australia, they always watch the volley volleyball. But that's probably because of the short shorts. But yeah, right, it's a hard pill to swallow for most liberals. If you if you th- if you think that the tr- that the trans women in sports debate is legitimate, you are outing yourself as transphobic. At the end of the day, it's 
bare minimum shit. It shouldn't matter whether someone's cis or trans. They're fucking women. And if you have a problem with someone being cis or trans and performing in women's sports, then we need to have a conversation about the way that sports are segregated. And maybe an argument for... A, a more productive argument would be the desegregation of sports and a better system of sports that um, is better for everyone and more interesting. What a, what a wild concept. It's amazing. I know. Uh, but Jen apparently has learned the wrong lesson from that, especially when you look at some of the clips from his most recent rant about trans people that he just did the other day regarding trans people in sports and the extreme radical activists that support trans people in sports. Now, let's listen really quick to some of the clips from this rant to see where exactly Jenk is on these issues. No, you, the puberty block, I'm sorry, the hormone blockers do lower the testosterone. They do even things out a lot, right? But the, men still have other physical advantages. Like we maintain mass much better. Mm -hmm. And to give you a sense of how unfair this is, that where she uh, won in Canada with 275 yeah. so pound bench press, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I bench press 275, okay? And that's, that's not a big deal for a guy. This is so ridiculous. This is literally so ridiculous. Okay, think about this. He's like, oh, this trans- See what I mean? By saying that they don't understand the biology or the arguments, that that, that is the most, that is the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Like, how do you debate someone who doesn't understand basic concepts about biology, or about, about trans type biology. Like, he doesn't understand what these hormones do. He doesn't. He doesn't understand, obviously doesn't understand how the Olympics um, regulates testosterone and other factors. Like, he doesn't know shit about what he's talking about. He would do less damage to the trans community if he just shut the fuck up. Maybe his fat ass retains better mass. <laughs> yes, a great competition where she broke a record bench pressing 275 pounds, and clearly that's unfair because I, a cisgender man, can easily bench press 275 pounds. Therefore, there must be an advantage. And it's like, my guy, she literally broke a record. Like, what are you talking about? She clearly wasn't having like an incredibly easy time. You're stumbling so close to the point. Like, Jenk is literally incapable in this moment of separating trans women from cisgender yep. men in his own brain right here. Like, he is fundamentally refusing to connect the dots that hormones maybe actually have an impact on, I know this is wild, your ability to maintain mass. That maybe perhaps, like, your biological traits are not dictated by some ethereal assignment of gender that you were given at birth, and maybe perhaps are actually dictated by the hormones that are, like, flowing through your body, telling your body what to do. Like, could he use, could he have used a sillier example? He's trying to say that trans women have an advantage in sports because he personally, as a cisgender man that has never taken estrogen, would be able to beat them all. You can't, and you can't debate people like that. You cannot debate people like that. That's what I mean. Like, it's a waste of time. They are not going to change their mind because they are stuck in ignorance. At a bench press competition. This is just on its face ridiculous. But just wait, because it's going to get worse. I mean, it's okay, but it's not that big a deal. You're going to put that in the women's division. I don't care how many hormone blokes. And again, and again, like, again, like, you're just... You're just basically, he, Chenk is basically saying right now that trans women aren't real women. So like, so fucking what if trans, if a trans woman um, is, if, if one singular trans woman is better than one singular cis, cis woman at a particular sport? So fucking what? So, so, so like, we're not allowed to win ever? <laughs> we're not, we're never allowed to win at anything? Oh, you'll, you'll let us pretend, you'll let us, um, you know, uh, pretend to be women, like this is what he's saying, well, he'll let us pretend to be women, but as soon as we want to actually achieve things as women, no, no, you can't have that womanhood. And this is what it is, it's policing woman womanhood. That's why I hate this, this, this whole idea that there's some sort of debate about trans women in sports. Like, it's not that. It's you... If it's you not believing that I, as a woman, can achieve something as a woman. You're trying to strip me of my womanhood when I achieve something in life. Fuck you, Chank. Blockers you had. It's got to make a difference, okay? And in the limited cases, they're not, like, instantly breaking every record like Trump was saying, right? And but that's not no true either. Like, that's not true. He's, he's both transphobic and wrong in everything he's saying. Better than the average bear. That's not true. Like, literally show me any statistic oh, that shows that you. trans women are performing better than average in sports. It's, in fact, uh, it's part of the research ghost. that I showed Jank that it actually isn't happening. It literally is not happening. There is yet to be a trans woman win color? at the Olympics, yeah. despite the fact that trans women have been allowed at the Olympics for a long time that is bright. Once again, it is almost Ooh. like Jank is refusing to take in the information that people are presenting to him and is just Ugh. making up things in his head and taking that as reality. And, and here, I'll add one thing that's really important. And uh, we shot a show, I don't know if you guys are ever going to see it, we shot a pilot just this 
last weekend with a mixed uh, Republican and Democratic. Yeah, like, and that's another debate that I'd rather have about sports is like is is the amount of money that they have in sports. Like the amount of money is it, it, it tri- contributes to this this idea of fairness because it's not just about fairness. There are there is a lot of money involved in this as well, and when pe- it affects people's money, that's when people start to go, ah, oh, you know, uh, they they used to be a man. Oh! In order to try and recoup their losses, fuck those people. We're just a we're just like a political toy to be used, like a political pawn to be used and pulled out when women's bodies need to be um, policed. Family. Okay. We asked I asked them about trans rights. Should they have the same rights, same exact rights in housing, employment, etc.? Every one of them, including hardcore Trump people, were like, "Yes, they should have the same yeah, exact yeah, rights." Exactly. When I asked about this topic, every one of them, except one of six out of seven, were like, "No, not competing in sports. Doesn't make sense. Men and women are." I mean, that makes sense, considering that you frame it in such an incorrect way. Or different, okay? And so whether that's, you know, we can get into the, uh, continue that scientific debate, but as far as the no. American people go and politics go, you're going to lose them. Whether it's right or wrong, it doesn't matter. You're going to lose them. Oh, yeah, that's right. We should uh, adjust all of our political opinions based off of what's popular. And what- I live in Australia, dude. Fuck off. Like, not, not Benny, but like, Chank, 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 I live in Australia. The cultural shit. The cultural cultural war shit that you're pushing damages my life worse than whether you have uh, whether you win an election. So fuck, go fuck yourself. That's unpopular, right? Because here's the thing, Jank. You personally, as somebody that works in the news, have a responsibility. You <laughs> Just have a responsibility bit the fob every time a trans person is competing because of rich. Like, oh, how are they gonna worry about like what I'm saying? No, you. What was that bullshit that Gary V said? Gary V was like. I wish I had nothing, because then, oh, like, Gary V was just, like, fetishizing poverty and shit. It was fucked up. And you know, trans women win because, uh, they, uh, they, they work, they, they had nothing. They have to work harder than everyone else. It's that grind set mentality. You just have to, like, give people the facts. And that, as somebody who is working in media... If I ever succeed, it's gonna be because I come from middle class, upper middle class family. I have pretty pretty privilege, and I pass. Uh, and I'm white. Uh, not because of uh, the hard work I've done, because everybody fucking works hard. That is a bare minimum. Everyone works hard. You are not special if you have made it in life and you worked hard. It's not because you worked hard. Everybody works hard. You do actually have an influence over people's opinions. But it's playing this game of, oh, I want to sound and seem really smart, regardless as to whether that or not something is actually true. And so I'm going to say something that's not true, uh, just because it's a big smart brain thing to say. You know, I think discriminating against trans people is okay as a, a smart galaxy brain strategic move, because we got to win over all of these people who, who just don't understand yet. Like, can we stop doing this? Can we stop playing this game of, like, I really want to look smart, so I'm afraid of saying something that is literally true? Or, like, standing up for what is just morally correct? I mean... And it's also a self-preservation um, tactic as well. Like, if I see people like Chenk saying biological man, biological female, trans rights activists, trans women in sports, all of those things, that he's indicating me that he is not safe to be around as a trans person. Like, if, if things go wrong in the future and suddenly I'm being, um, you know, thrown, in, thrown into a uh, fucking concentration camp or something or, or a gas chamber... Cenk Huger is not the man who will come to save me because he couldn't even stand up for me when it made him a little bit of un- uncomfortable, you know? That's just facts. Quite literally, if you don't have enough evidence- Not purity testing, it's self-fucking preservation. Evidence, why do you think you should, the default should be discrimination? Explain this. Ex- why is the default discrimination? And heaven forbid we stand up for people and say, no, trans people should just be allowed to play in sports. That's good, actually. That's fine. There's no evidence to suggest that we should discriminate against trans people because of some sort of biological advantage, because of course, that's like a silly, nonsensical idea. <laughs> and also, wild concept, women with PCOS have a ton of advantages in sports. Are we going to discriminate against them too? Right, once again, this is a failure to understand that trans people are just a type of person. We already do. Right? This is thinking that transness is something extra, which is another vibe that I got with Jank over the phone, was just this feeling that it seemed like he thought that transitioning and being trans was like this extra special thing that people did for fun or to make a political statement, and not just literally part of like who trans people are. Once again, this is just a failure to understand- No, literally, that's what they're gonna say. That's literally, you- you- yeah. I wish you weren't correct, but- But, the, but you're spitting bars, man. as just a type of person that exists. And the idea of, oh, you're just losing the average person, you're losing, I can win over Republicans on, like, the housing and all these other things, is just absurd on its face. Because, are, really, Jank, are people just gonna vote for a Republican because they're very angry that there's a trans person playing sports ball? Come on. Like, be real. Be real. Especially because, and this is another thing that I- If you, if, if abandoning trans people was 
to if 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 me saying a mean thing to you on the internet was enough for you to abandon every trans person then you were never going to be an ally to begin with like bye felicia i'm not sad that you're gone if you can't even do the bare minimum fucking hell like I have, I have, I, I have, I have had people, black people, um, tell me that they hate me because of some of the things that I say and the kind of things that I advocate for, right? That's not going to stop me from advocating for black rights. That's not going to stop me from like trying to make sure that pe black people, like that, those very black people are taken care of in life. What the fuck kind of argument is that, Chank? You're basically saying that my existence is is worth less than my agreeableness to your political cause. Holy shit, go fuck yourself. I pointed out to Jack. If you look at the states where Republicans made their entire campaign just attacking trans people in sports, you know what happened when Democrats actually stood in defense of trans people? Oh yeah, that's right. The Republicans lost miserably. Nobody is thinking about this. People are not like just like like struggling to fall asleep and like, oh my god, oh I can't even believe it. trans people are playing sports. What what am I gonna do? Nobody's doing that. They, like there's like, a tiny group of people who are obsessed with trans people that are like going on a tirade, but that's not the majority. If you look at Michigan, in Michigan, the Republicans made their entire campaign just like we hate trans people. And what happened now? Oh, the Democrats have a trifecta in Michigan now. And every state where Republicans have tried to focus on just attacking trans people has literally undermined their own support. So what is happening right here seems to be very clearly Jenk hiding behind hypothetical people's opinions in order to mask his own opinion. He doesn't think that trans people should be allowed to play professional sports. And instead of just saying that, which I guess on some level he does, he hides behind, oh, you know, the American people aren't ready for trans people to play sports, you know? But it gets even worse because he basically follows this up by blaming trans athletes and anybody Imagine who that to just out. support One day black guy spilled busted on my wife who should hear it. legislation <laughs> that is passing across the country and for Republicans winning. That is that is what that that is what Chenk's argument or the Tit Young Turks argument boils down to. That's the saddest thing. It's so fucking ridiculous that it's laughable, but also it, it's it's terrifying at the same time. Incredibly selfish. What kind of like privileged world do these people live in that like someone disagreeing with you on Twitter is enough for you to abandon an entire political movement and throw an entire group of minorities under the bus like holy fuck i don't think i've ever heard of anything more white than that that's more white than mayo of activists who are betraying their own community because when you say i don't care about elections who cares about the democrats that isn't the point the republicans introduced over 600 bills against the lgbtq community that's because of elections and over 70 of them have already passed when you say i don't care about winning and i don't care about elections what you're saying is i'm super selfish leftist activist and i'd like to build my cloud but meanwhile i'm willing to throw trans people and the entire lgbtq community under the bus i'm just gonna i just think we should clip that hold on but meanwhile I'm yeah we go we, we need to just clip this bit out of the out, out, out of context because like this may be a clip chip clip chimping but it, it it is what his entire argument boils down to is this i'm willing to throw trans people and the entire lgbtq community under the bus knowing that these bills are gonna pass because we're laser focused on a losing issue and he's like oh. that's it that's it that that is literally your argument check that is literally what you're standing for oh Fucking if republicans hell. win because the trans people want to play sports it'll be all your fault and like how disgusting is that actually you are genuinely gonna blame people whose existence is like actively being criminalized by republicans for their own oppression like get like give me a break this is actually your fault more than it is any trans person's fault jank personally you it is more his fault because what jank is doing is jank is going to an audience of people who are presumably on the left and telling them no it's okay to be transphobic it's okay to compromise with the rights of trans people it's okay to say that we should just discriminate against trans people in some ways if it makes these republicans happy and like that is un believably disgusting it's just we take the high road they take the, the low shameless thing to which is why the democrats never fucking do. win like how on god's green earth do you think that you get to call yourself some sort of like principled leftist who's out to do the right thing how can you call yourself the home of progressives when you are actively cutting deals with fascists about the rights of trans people and then spreading transphobic nonsense to an audience of like millions of people it is deeply irresponsible and fundamentally it's pathetic. This is genuinely embarrassing. The degree to which this is irresponsible just knows no bounds because there are so many people that are literally looking to people like Jenk for opinions and he's literally just giving them an open invitation to be as transphobic as they want to be because it's politically strategic. They'll say that, but okay, you don't care about the politics? Let's just for once in your life. Think no, no, Anna, 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 I care about the politics. It's you who doesn't care about the politics because you've all you've said the opposite things in the past. You've said the opposite things you've talked about how these things are losing issues to talk about 
So why I talk about them? You would do less damage by not talking about them and actually talking about something that matters. But secure the bag. Strategically about what that means. That means that you're going to continue pushing. No, the, the, these are the people that that this is this this is who um, MLK was talking about. This, and this is the white 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 woman uh, weaponizing her whiteness in order to attack black people, as we're going to like see later on. Like this bitch went on to right wing um, outlets and threw Oliomi Ali under the bus. Right? Like, she singled out the one black woman who fucking called out her shit for what it was by name over and over on right-wing outlets, basically throwing her under the bus for abuse and shit. The Democratic Party to unequivocally support everything that the trans activists want, even if it's unpopular among the electorate. That means they're not getting reelected. That means they're going to lose to Republicans. Republican lawmakers who are... Past Again, I don't give a fuck about your elections. I care about the cultural war bullshit that you're spreading to other countries. Like, th these are the real issues. The issues are where, is where the money is going, and also the issues that you are choosing to present as legitimate when they aren't. Draconian, disgusting legislation <clears throat> in various states. And you know it. You know it. You're just trying to grift for the money. It's right now as we speak against the transgender community. Look at this. You're going to push the Democratic Party to unequivocally support everything the trans activists want. Like, shut up. Literally, shut the fuck up. This is so embarrassing. Like, Anna Kasparian, and like, look, I'm going to be real. This is my personal opinion, but whatever. I think Anna Kasparian is genuinely personally transphobic. I'm just going to say it right now. She's like saying and doing all of the things. She's referring to every yes. trans person as a trans rights activist. Re referencing every trans person as a trans... Yeah. I, I, if you use unironically biological male biological female and trans act tra trans rights activist as like unironic actual terms for things i'm going to assume that you just are transphobic because that's safer to me than like not thinking that way i don't care about changing your mind i don't care i'll smile laugh and nod if i have to in order to keep my job and my livelihood but i don't trust you rights activist is just on its face literally transphobic and it's one of the things that transphobes have been pushing for a long time is just calling every trans person a trans rights activist i mean and the media more broadly does this as well and this whole idea of like you're gonna lose the republicans you're gonna lose the republicans if you cater to these trans people once again is entirely debunked most people are fine with trans people and when republicans make their entire platform about attacking trans people it actually does undermine their political success we just live in a country that is very much not a most, pe most people are okay with trans people existing but don't understand what that means it has all this gerrymandering all these other things and so republicans still have like seats in a lot of places i know a wild concept but genuinely if you look at their poll numbers in response to them focusing on just trans people existing it's not working it is genuinely not working for them it's undermining their electoral success but of course you can't not take the opportunity to blame trans people for their own oppression am i right it's really great that anna kasparian is doing this and by the way you schmucks you're falling exactly into the right-wing trap the republicans they tried everything they tried anti-gay stuff it didn't work they tried trans bathrooms you remember that that didn't work trans kicking the trans uh, gender community out of the military that didn't work they drilled and drilled and drilled in until they finally found a little tiny nugget of like hey trans folks in like competitive sports seems a little bit much and you don't engage them in that fight they lose like everything yeah. else but idiot activists yes i just called you an idiot activists go in there go, no i'm gonna fall right into that trap and i'm gonna fight on the only losing ground we have so we can elect more republicans so they can pay, pass more anti-lgbt laws I mean, yeah, like, that is exactly what you're doing right now, Cenk, you fucking idiot. Great, well played. I'm sure your clout and your brand is doing great. Th th these clips are just so infuriating. Like, literally, like, projection, projection, projection with these people. Holy fuck. Seriously, like, they've done studies into millionaires, right? Millionaires and people with lots of money are less likely to trust other people because of their preconceived notions about what people believe in. That's hilarious. Like, did you know this? <laughs> like, millionaires think that poor people are um, just selfish and doing the wrong things because that's them putting their own preconceived notions and ideas about how the world works, their own ideas, 
projecting those onto other people in order to understand them. That's projection. And so it's fucking hilarious to watch the Young Turks literally call themselves out for the shit that they're doing. This is it. Cenk is saying right now what the Young Turks are doing right now. This is what the Young Turks are doing right now. They lose on everything else. But idiot activists. Yes, I just called you an idiot. Activists go in there and go, no. I'm going to fall right into that trap, and I'm going to fight on the only losing ground we have so we can elect more Republicans so they can pay, pass more anti-LGBT laws. Great. Well played. I'm sure your clout and your brand is doing great. I'm sure your clout and your brand is doing great. Right back at you, Chank. These clips are just so infuriating, genuinely. Like, that talk about betrayal is just so, like, pathetic and embarrassing and shameless. Coming from Jenk and Anna right here. Like, oh, you're betraying the trans community by fighting for trans rights. How dare you just say that trans people should be treated equally in society? Don't you know that you're supposed to live as second-class citizens so that I can feel better about myself when I give you rights? Literally spare me. This is ridiculous. But I think the real icing on the cake here is this tweet where Anna Kasparian has decided to unilaterally declare Jesse... Here we go. Yeah, Je Jesse Singal is a transphobe who has been called out multiple times in the past for writing transphobic articles. Uh, Anna Kasparian has been, I, I believe, like, I think, I think uh, Benny says this in a sec, um, that Anna Kasparian has been, um, like, subscribed to his Substack for over a year now. Um, but yeah, not, so she has defended Jesse Singal for not being a transphobe. And so pe they, I, so fucking they them army again, isn't it? They, they just want to suppress anything that questions the safety of puberty blockers, cross-sex human hormones for minors. Okay, let's do this once and for all. Puberty blockers are reversible. Any negative effects from puberty blockers are a result of overdose or of overuse over time we are supposed to go through puberty in order for our bones to develop properly and certain other things to be developed properly the only things negative things that puberty blockers do happen when you misuse them or go on them for an indefinite amount of time without going through puberty which is how they are used when you stop your puberty blockers and go on to hormone therapy or just simply go off them and let your um body's natural uh, not natural like through either going off of the puberty blockers or going on to hrt those negative results become completely inconsequential like trans women in sports inconsequential like, you get off puberty block- yeah, done randomly, you get off puberty blockers, you start the puberty. That's it. That's it. These negative effects that they're talking about are in cases when you don't go off the puberty blockers, or you take an unrecommended dose. Like, those are the two things. When we're talking about the the where, where we're talking about puberty blockers and irreversible damage it is a fucking lie it is a cherry picking of data and studies in order to make something look bad which isn't we have been using puberty blockers for cis children for decades now and we know the negative effects that they can have when you use them for a long period of time without going through puberty indefinite amount of time i'm talking about if you never went off of puberty blockers then you would have negative effects that is what we're talking about here we're talking about these chemicals being used in a way that they were never intended to be used for those are the negative things that can happen when you abuse and misuse drugs if I abused and misused my ADHD drugs, I would have negative effects. Come on. Like, there are more negative effects from taking fucking, um, from taking birth control for women than there are for puberty blockers for children. And we know this. Come on. It is a non-issue. And anyone who keeps on bringing it up as one are transphobic.
and we need to stop coddling the white woman in the room in order to protect her from criticism. <sighs> Puberty blockers shouldn't be used for a decade. They should be like five years. Yeah. No, exactly. To not be a transphobe. And this is what I mean about debating people who don't understand the science. Like, you can't debate these people because not only do they not understand the science, but they don't want to. Because if they did understand the science, then they wouldn't make, be making these arguments. But their argument is an ideological one and not one based in science. Despite and They are worried about kids, though. I'm sure every minute they're going to talk about helping kids with pu 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 puberty blockers. Any minute, Rowan's. Yeah. Here's an interesting one for you. Who do you think puberty blockers are for? Are they for the kids? Because... When it comes down to puberty blockers, right, that's for the parents. That's so that the parents have the time to really interrogate their kids over what their what their gender should be, isn't it? It's for cis people. It's so that we give cis people the time they need in order to accept us for the gender that we are. That's what it really is. When you start thinking about that, and you start thinking about these kids, right? Kind of sucks. This is what's really wild. Jesse Singal literally talking to whistleblowers at a medical facility that <laughs> appear to have made some significant HIPAA violations about their patients in sharing the information that they did with Jesse Singal. And, of course, you have him running around spewing all of the same transphobic nonsense that basically your average transphobe is going to be spreading. You know, the types of things about like, oh, we don't know about hormones and oh, HRT for kids and oh my god, it's so terrifying. Oh my goodness, they're turning all of our kids transgender. Yeah. Can can we please stop? Can we please stop um like just letting these arguments go? Can we please just 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 call them out as transphobic now? I'm 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 over it. I'm over attacking the arguments and explaining over and over. I have explained puberty blockers over and over. I've explained explained trans women in sports over and over. I've explained all these issues over and over. I am fucking sick of it. Can we just call it transphobic and move on? Like, at the end of the day, cut the chaff, you know, cut the chaff from our lives and stick with the people that really matter. Oh my god. He's single, he's yeah. a good faith, I think critical thinker, I, 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 I'm subscribed to Blocked and Reported. I have listened to endless podcast episodes uh, from Blocked and Reported. I haven't seen anything from Jesse Single that communicates to me that he is a transphobe, that he's a bad person. He did straight news reporting on basically what, you know, some of the risks could be when it comes to transitioning literal kids uh, with puberty blockers and then cross-sex hormones. And through his reporting, which I'm very sad to say I didn't really come across until this year, I learned that I was wrong about a bunch of other things. Like, Jesse Singal literally is one of the, like, more notable transphobic people that is out there putting out misinformation about trans people. And I, honestly, no, I would if I could. <laughs> Is the one thing what is the one thing that I wish in this world I could have is is those that I a, a fully working reproductive system in that way, um, which maybe not in my lifetime, but the you know the science the science says that that will exist someday if we if we allow allow it to exist it will exist. I don't I don't think it'll happen within my lifespan, but. Um, I want to make sure that other people who feel the same as me um, have access to that someday, which would be nice. Actively stoking the flames of this big wave of anti-trans legislation, and, and it's just deeply shameless to come in and say, no, I definitely think, as a cisgender woman, think that, that Jesse Singal is, is not transphobic at, at all, at all, so... Yeah, like, and this is one of those things. This is, this is why um, I, I, I'm sick and tired of staying on the fence when it comes to black women calling out white women about racism and transphobia, I'm just going to fucking back the black woman because time and time and time again, it's the minorities calling out this bullshit who are in the right. Yeah, that's right. Well, my, my club should... Wait, yeah, what? It's good. It's fine. Wait, what does that mean? Yeah, Hold trust on. me. Trust me. And then of Hold course up. she starts talking about like, oh, puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones for children. I think the important thing to understand here, and this is a line that I've like continuously told people and like said on TYT myself, that like really what it boils down to is hormone replacement therapy is literally just puberty. Like at the end of the day, it's just puberty. And yeah, whether it's puberty with estrogen or testosterone, it's going to carry some risks just like it does with cisgender children. That's just part of puberty. And it's actually not all that different if it's a trans puberty or a cis puberty, oh. believe it or not. And so anybody fear-mongering about the effects are permanent, the effects are permanent. Yeah, that's kind of the whole point, isn't it? You know? Isn't that, like, the whole point? But if the effects were really entirely permanent, then... Again, again, like, this is... The puberty blockers are for cis people who are scared 
that their kids are going through a fad, which which they're just not. Science says differently. Transitioning as an adult wouldn't really work, would it? And yet, of course, it does. And you know, it's funny because their biggest fear for what happens to children who are in hormone therapy is that a cisgender child might accidentally get gender dysphoria. You know, the thing that trans children just deal with if they're not allowed to get hormones. And so literally, this is just a nonsense argument of throwing all trans people under a bus out of the hypothetical fear that a cisgender person might take hormones and just realize that it's not for them. Which at that point, by the way, they could just stop taking hormones. And so really, when you take all this together, it seems like Anna Kasparian is fully engulfed into like the conspiracy theories against trans people. And I, I genuinely think that she believes a lot more than what she's saying because I've just seen hints of like just some like extremely rabid transphobic nonsense. And with Jenk, Jenk seems to be following Anna Kasparian along and kind of seems to be of the vibe of like, oh, no, I'm this big smart news guy and I've been doing this for a long time. I couldn't possibly be wrong and very much relying on his lack of any type of understanding of biology and just making ridiculous assumptions about the difference between men and women and thinking that that's some sort of like universally applicable thing, not thinking about how hormones play a role in that. And of course, is bouncing off of Anna's deeply transphobic energy. And of course, he can't help himself but frame himself as like the brilliant galaxy brain reasonable person. And of course, all these trans people are just ridiculous and out there and just radical and couldn't possibly be, you know, referencing like very basic science that is easy to go through. And any attempts to educate either Anna Kasparian or Jenk has kind of just been met with a lot of stubbornness of digging in their heels, rejecting the new information and replacing it with their own imaginations about how they think things should be. And it, it just continues to escalate over the past several months. And that fundamentally is why I just can't be a part of TYT anymore. It's just too much. It's ridiculous because at a certain point it becomes embarrassing for me because how can I as a trans person who actually knows the science behind this, who actually is like actively trying to support trans people as somebody that people look up to me, right? People literally like send me messages and be like I'm so inspired you know you being a TYT like it, it made me want to come out or like my kids watch your show and and you know it, it just like it gives them so much hope and they're so excited to see a trans person in the news and I have to deal with messages from them now asking about hey what's going on with TYT hey what the hell is happening here like why is Anna saying this why is Jenk saying this and that is just like the amount of like psychic damage that I have to take every single day dealing with not only the transphobic nonsense of the Republicans but also whatever Jenk and Anna are on right now it's just too much and I just because at a certain point it becomes embarrassing because then people think that I'm like endorsing their views and I cannot I will not I refuse to lend any support to those views whatsoever because fundamentally they're dangerous and they're ridiculous and like they're straight up evil it is just this shameless selfish ignorance that is fueling this and just this self-importance coming from both Jenk and Anna this idea that they don't actually have to listen so no yeah I'm done with TYT because I can't let anybody think that I have any type of support for their opinions here because they're just ridiculous and it's just gotten to be too much for me to deal with all of this nonsense and the last thing I want is for them to be able to say oh no it's fine we have like a transgender host so it's all good actually because no, it's not all good, actually. It is, in fact, quite and you, bad. And you fucking know. You fucking know they do that. Yeah. Holy shit. Oh, fucking hell. Wait, Brett Weinstein? Why is he coming up again? Wait, hold on one second. Oh, I need to see how old this one is. How old are you? What the fuck? Where is the where's the date on this shit? I guess it was about a month or two ago. Ah! Go away. What? Seven months ago. Fucking hell. Why am I getting shit from seven months ago? Oh yeah. Um I'm just gonna go on a quick break. Uh I shall be back very shortly. Um put some ads on. Oh, before I do that, just in case, um don't don't accept any uh, uh, deals with uh, Raid Shadow Legends. Don't play the game. Stay away from it. It's um, a company. Uh, it's produced by a company that's uh, based and owned in Israel. So yeah, BDS solidarity with uh, Palestine. All right, I'll be back soon. Don't go anywhere. We'll do either way. Either way, I'll be right back after this break. <laughs> I just made it back. <laughs> Wait, what? What did you send me? What the hell? What is this? <laughs> what the hell? But why? Why? That can't be real. That, that is not real. That's not real. That can't be real. What the fuck is that? Look at that shit. What the fuck? <laughs> He's just fucking gone. Oh, what the fuck? 
just in the background. What the f- <laughs> Fucking what the fuck? Why would you do this? <laughs> it's fake. Uh, it has to be fake. It has to be fake, but it's awesome. What the fuck? Oh, I love shit like that. That's funny. That's funny. Let's go. Let's go to the list. Let's go back in there. All right. Yes. Back to this shit. All right. So we've seen this one already. Let me put that away. But yeah, her her reply tweets and replies are pretty fucking shit right now. Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> White people really think that civil rights were won by... Damn, Destiny fell off when it comes to debates. White people really think that civil rights were won by black people holding hands in a circle, singing Kumbaya and convince white, convincing white people to get us rights through the power of love and song. Destiny says yes. That That's his... That's his... Uh, his... Wow. But what happened to his debate skills, bro? Like, do, you used to be, you used to be better than that. Oh, and, and, and I'm, I'm just going through Anna's uh, replies, though. By the way. Mhm. Mm oh yeah. Do 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 do. do. Yeesh. Right. Why is Evan Vigeland not not oh, you fucking? Life is trans. Uh, why am I not following you as well? I don't know Lana Omar, Omar very much. Jimmy Dore, fucking hell! I need to fucking. I think the I think the um the Shinigami eyes is is, is a little bit broken. Oh. <sighs> Puddling person. Oh, it's Juniper. Juniper. You don't know how I do. No idea what I talk about or how often I defend the trans community. I think the fringe shit and activists like you. Fucking hell. Mm -hmm. So. So. This is Sitch and Adam, who um, are conservatives who LARP as uh, centrists, so they call themselves libs, lib, um, disaffected liberals, and they love to, to talk about how they're actually on the left, similar to, you know, the sham that Tim Pool does, basically, you know, yelling out the conservative parts and whispering the leftist parts, you know what I mean? We're in the, we're in the middle, but we're going to make all leftists look crazy while, like, platforming, like, Debates that aren't relevant, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, Anna Kasparian went on to Adam and Sitch, which is a right-wing media outlet on the interwebs. Wanted to have a look at this today. Hey now, it's your boy PSA Sitch here with another Sunday Sunday show with everyone's favorite Supreme Court enthusiast, Adam Trenbeck. Oh yeah, yeah, I've been reading up on the Supreme Court, Sitch. I'm learning so much about how our country <laughs> functions. It's amazing. And we have, look, a special guest with us here today, Anna Kasparian, co-host of The Young Turks. Do you do you, you want to introduce yourself? I mean, I feel like everyone, our audience definitely knows who you are, but you're probably doing other things as well. At the moment, I'm not. I'm mostly uh, focusing on CYT. But yeah, I'm the executive producer and co-host of The Young Turks mm -hmm. and have been since 2007. And, um, you know, I've done other things on the side at various points uh, of my career. But for now, that's the main focus. OK, so we're mm -hmm. very excited to have this conversation. We started talking a little bit before the show, and you seem open to talking about a lot of things. You seem to be going through kind of a political transformation, evolution. I don't really know the right word to call it, but I'll let you talk about that. But first of all, people want to know, because I, I did, you did mention in our little chat in DMs mm -hmm. that I was wrong about the Daily Wire thing. Now, I <laughs> make predictions on the show all the time, and I have never right. been wrong before. So uh, people, I, I've been making jokes about you may, might end up at the Daily Wire. That's not true? No, no. <laughs> it's so it's funny because, you know, I'm going through something very real and very sincere and it's uncomfortable and it has not been an enjoyable process for me. It's been difficult. And so the Internet being what it is, all sorts of people from all sorts of political ideologies have theories on, like, what's actually happening with me. Right. And the main accusation Honestly, on the left and the right is that I'm, I'm grifting. Well, yeah, you are grifting. 
obviously. Like, why else would you post a transphobic comment, put on your white woman, white woman facade, attack a black woman, and then, like, revel in people dragging you over that? Now you're going on to right-wing outlets to cry about being attacked by the left. That's a grift. You're grifting. You're trying to appeal to a right-wing a right wing audience in order to make money and have subs. Like, I don't know if your subs are struggling. I, I doubt that they are. But, like, you're just... Yeah. I, I don't really care about, like, what you th think is politics in these sort of things, you know? Like, changing minds. I, I, I don't care about that. I don't care. Um... It's not my responsibility to change anyone's mind on anything. I'm just going to talk what I think is truth, um, is demonstrably true, um, and yeah, we'll leave it at that. Which is hilarious because literally nothing has changed about my work life. I'm in the mm. same place. I have the same audience. Um, the audience doesn't like some of what I have to say or some of the new conclusions I've, I've come to. And so I wanted to kind of... So you have changed. ...straight about what I have personally experienced. I don't know what my political labels are at this point, right? Because I feel like I don't really fit anywhere. And it's... That's just full honesty. It's, again, very uncomfortable for me. And I want to say that out of any point in my adult life, this is probably the point where I'm the most malleable and open to new information because of what I've experienced over the last few years. And I can get into details about that um, in just a moment. But that was the reason why. She sounds a lot like Jimmy Dore did when he fucking separated from the Young Turks. Gonna Just got to say, you know, like when he started going down this conspiracy theory rabbit hole. This is just gay JK Rowling again. This is JK Rowling. Like, seriously, we've learnt nothing. We've learnt nothing. J.K. Rowling was saying transphobic shit from the start, and then everyone was Pikachu face when she turned around and went full tran t full turf. And that's what this is. I, I told Adam that, no, this isn't, like, a Daily Wire thing. I, I you know, have no interest in working at the Daily Wire. But at least um, J.K. Rowling didn't, like, completely throw uh, a black female content creator under the bus immediately, you know? That's new. I have no interest in leaving TYT. Oh, yeah. If anything, I just feel a responsibility to kind of correct what I got wrong in the past uh, to the best of my ability and just do better moving forward. And the, the reason why I've been in TYT as long as I have is despite what any of you might think about Jenks, he has never once tried to censor me or tell me what I can and can't say. That's the reason why, you know, we get into these fiery debates and there's never any like retaliation for it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as long as I'm free to speak my mind and genuinely speak my mind the way I have been, uh, I plan on staying there. And there's absolutely no monetary or financial incentive for me to do anything I'm doing right now. Well, we sit in my box a lot on this show so she doesn't exist under capitalism like this is what i mean like this is so fucking white and privileged eh? this is like she's got enough money holy shit she looks like a muppet right now look at that the fuck hold on i'm sorry i this is uh I'm sorry, I just need to do something right now. Uh, give me a sec. This, this, this needs to be done. I'm sorry, I just had a realization. I just had this moment of, 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 of clarity just now. A meme needs to be created. No! Don't tell me those things! Let me, en let me enjoy! Let me enjoy this. Let me enjoy this. Come on, please. Let me enjoy this. Wait, why can't I see it? Why can't I see it? There it is. You see it, right? You see what I'm seeing, right? Ah. And I mm -hmm. think people, you know, I think ah, they like fucking that. I hell, think I'm not trying to do that. I think I'm doing right now. We sit in my box a lot on this show. There it is.
this needs to be done and, and I'm not sorry I'm not sorry I'm sure I'm sure the gay guy will will understand it's gonna be worth it trust me Do 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 Give it the lasso select. I should have put it into the AI thing. But we're gonna rely on my steady hand. Stead. There we go, that was pretty good. Delete. Ah. He's long gone. Yeah. It's amazing. Do 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 do. Also, if you're wondering what uh, software I'm using, I am using Paint.net with, like, there are some modifications that I'm using, but uh, it is a quite quite a good software if you're wanting to do simple, simple stuff like this. That face, put that at the bottom where the Pikachu face is. Yeah. Yeah. I think I should. There we go. And background. Layers. Horizontal. Go. Make it smaller. Yep. I'm sorry, but like she, she is a fucking Muppet now. Uh, she she looks like a fucking Muppet. Holy shit, does she? Alright. Let's crop it. Actually, not yet. Hold on. Oops. Ah, no. Not, but, not that button. That there. Now we crop. Do do do. Done. Oh shit. One more thing. We need the background, which I believe no, it's H. Wait, which one's which one is it? F. Why is Phil? Oh, Phil F. Yes. Kill. That works, ish. Yay! We go back to first person while I save my meme. I want because I'm a boomer who has a folder for the memes that I've made. Boomer. Oh yeah. We do.
All right, back to it. We are gonna keep going. Alright, game quarter. Info, no more game. Desktop. There we go. <clears throat> All right. I think I need to. I need to drop it in, don't I? Hold on. Widgets and text. What have we got? Overlays. I think I need, just need to add an image. You want to be here? Okay. Well, I'll continue it very... Uh, you know what? I'm gonna just going to continue that while I'm doing this. And I think they do not respect them. I think they like that. I think they admire that, that we are able to fight with one another over a policy position and still walk away friends. So I spent the last week, I was watching a bunch of your most recent videos. And mm -hmm. I mean, you're snapping back at Jank quite <laughs> often. I mean, it's uh, it's actually quite refreshing. There's a couple things, and I, we, we have questions on these. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I'll, I'll let Sitch, I don't know, do you have anything that you want to ask before we get well, started? So, yeah, it turns out that Anna is a massive fan of our program. She's <laughs> every episode, just huge fan, right? <laughs> Well, okay, so I happened to come across a video you guys did about me. It was the stream on, um, I hate to name names, but you guys were covering the leftist mafia and their insane <laughs> backlighting video about me. You and hate to name name names. As far as I could see mm -hmm. that actually did a good job in highlighting how badly they were gaslighting me. Right. And so I thank you for doing that because... All right. I need to fucking say this. Bitches like her... Who use the term gaslighting like this really fucking piss me off. Okay? Because it is not gaslighting for someone to call you out for things you have demonstrably said. Things that you have said that people can prove you've said, the things you've done, people can prove you said. That's not gaslighting. It is gaslighting to lie about people calling you out and to claim that they are gaslighting. And that is a tactic that abusers use in order to deflect blame. How do I know this? I've been there. My abusive ex used to say, call me a gaslighter towards the end of our relationship, when I called her out for the things she did to me. So hearing a white woman bitch like this use the word gaslighting when people are calling you out for shit that you have said and done, I don't even have the words for how fucked up that is. That is gaslighting. <laughs> See, I, I, I did think that... Uh, hold on, I do have something else. Where do we go? To the title. I'm going to change change this one. I know it'll be uh, a bit of a tricky read there, but... There we go. Caslight cake keep Casparian. That's basically what this is right now. Where is my guy? Has been doing good? Oh, Corey? Yeah, no, he's doing great. We're actually in probably one of the best places mentally that we've been in quite a while. Um, pretty happy about that. Well, at the same time, you know, everything else is uh, dragging <laughs> like this. You know, when everyone around you... But yeah, like, don't trust anyone who uses gaslighting like this. Like, if they turn around... And, like, she literally is gaslighting during this um, interview. She claims that Oli Emi made it a race thing. She was the first person to make it a race thing. Right? She's fucking racist. Everyone who alleges to be your friends tells you something you know isn't true, but they keep repeating it to you over and over again. You start asking yourself, like, am I the crazy one? You know? <laughs> Everyone has been pointing to things you've said and done. 
you're a lying fucking Muppet bitch. So that, I really appreciated that. But you know, you guys have put out a ton of videos about me that have not been friendly or nice. And it's okay. I mean, I, I can be a good sport about it. And I do mm -hmm. think that you guys raised a few um, valid points. And I just need to be willing to accept where I was wrong and where people are critiquing from good faith. Like you guys have a little bit of an edgy style, This gets so, so I fucked up, by the way. That. But I have thick skin, so it didn't really bother she, me. That Nola, that's, Nola. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's commendable. Um, Spoiler alert. We are in this kind of like internet environment where everyone's very attacky to each other. Sorry. Um, spoiler alert, Nola, she defends Kyle Rittenhouse. Totally, especially when they're not, like, engaging with him in person, so. Yeah. You, you have to have kind of a, a thick skin. And I know, but, I mean, you're, you're talking about earlier, and one of the things that we always commended you on was, you know, when you publicly came out and you said that you were wrong about the, the Rittenhouse video, which, I mean, most people, when they make a mistake, they just try to hide it, or they try to shift blame, you know, Jimmy Dore very, you know, famously shifted blame to his producer, and I thought it was really commendable that you came out and you're like, no, 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 I got this wrong, and you mm -hmm. were trying to trying to show not just do this like for your sake but to say like listen audience you know you need to understand that this is the story and, and you know i don't want you guys to have the wrong information yeah there was look i the who? One, i guess through line you'll know alex jones the very wait who's worse than fucking kyle rittenhouse he is, murdered uh, cunts it just, more, it just became abundantly clear oh i'm sorry killed I'm cunts information. and i'm not just talking about like you know independent lefty outlets i'm talking about like legacy media outlets right mm -hmm. a lot of them it's not that they report misinformation it's that they omit i am eating a pizza pocket because I have no access to um, pizza rolls. I've always wanted to try pizza rolls. It's something I've always wanted to try. Details of the story that right. would, you know, maybe the, de the additional details of the story don't change your mind at all, right? But it's not up to them to decide that. Like, we should know every detail. I think the Amy Cooper story is another example. You know, I, it was fairly recently I came across uh, Camille Foster's very in-depth investigation into that story, and there were so many details of that story that were intentionally omitted or left out of the legacy media report. This is, uh, oh, sorry, the person she's talking about right now is the racist white woman who um, almost strangles her dog to death and um, threatens a black man in the park. Oh, yeah. Hold on. I'm going to allow that one. Sorry. It said murder a black. Oh, that's right. I need to, um, hold on. Um, how do I do this? How do I um, do the moderating stuff? What's the? How do I look up um, commands? Help. Yes. Dang it. Help. But what command? Um. Add. Dang it. Do 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 do. Oh wow, there's a lot of them. Announce. Unban. Clear. Commercial, emote only, delete poll, end poll, followers off, marker, mod, unmod, unmonitor, unmonitor, pin, poll, prediction, unraid, unraid, restrict. How do I add a term to um, the auto mod? Moderation. Moderation. Oh, here we go. Block terms and phrases. Uh, here we go. Uh. Add. Vests. Add. Trans activist at trans activist at DRA at DRAs at there we go. I just I just really want to see I just really want to um laugh when someone tries to post that in my chat one day and get like confused when they can't like use a dog whistle <laughs> but yeah uh so the dog is literally crying out in pain and says it was so bad so so she claimed right that the black guy had uh tried to lure the dog over to him and stuff like that but with ha without any proof um but all i saw was a white bitch um threatening to um kill the black man by calling the cops that's based that's what she did you block the word mayonnaise. What are you? An anti-anti-white racist?
Mayonnaise! Morning of it. I should put some mayonnaise on this. It would make it disgusting, but it'd be funny. And that painted a picture in my mind and in the minds of many others. Legacy media. That, you know, Holy a... shit! Legacy media. She is Jimmy. She's just she's becoming Jimmy Dore. What the fuck? Justification for the way that she was, you know, panicking when she was on the phone with the 911 dispatcher, right? But then you get this. But to find out... no, sorry. You end that sentence there. There's no justification for the way she acted. That's it. You don't need to say anything else. Based on what Camille Foster had. But you are a white woman who wants to protect other white women. Uh, found out and reported was that like she didn't have good cell reception, so the person on the other end of um, that conversation couldn't hear her. She was panicking because she mm -hmm. genuinely thought that she was at risk after. Here's another thing that was omitted in a lot of the reports after she was literally threatened by the bird watcher, right? Who said, right. you know, if you're gonna do what you want, I'm gonna do what I want, and you're not gonna like it. And then he proceeds to try to lure her dog to him. And listen, yeah, yeah. you might still you might still feel that her behavior was uncalled for, whatever. That's up to you. But you should know all choking the shit out of her dog like, that be, like i don't give a fuck what led up to that she threatened to kill the guy the black guy by calling the cops and she knew what she was doing oh these white bitches know we need to stop infantilizing white women okay we need to stop with this kitty gloves when it comes to this call it out for what it is it was a racist woman who did something, who threatened the life of a black man. Fuck that bitch. Oh, she is a horrible person. Yeah. Personal opinion. If, some random, if I'm alone at a park and some random guy tries to lure my dog away from me, I'm going to freak out. <laughs> you know, like I just am. And so, okay, with the Rittenhouse story, I was going to cover the trial and I just needed to go back and just like really, really look at all of the details and remember all the details. So when I. I don't care. I don't care if you're going to freak out, freak out. You did. I, I, it's an, it must be an American thing. I swear, like this, this, there's almost like this desire underneath, like Americans, white, white Americans, to like put themselves in positions in order to like kill people. You know? Oh, you know, if that person did something to my wife, I'd kill them. We'd find them and hit and kill them. You know? Oh, if someone, you know. If black people are rioting, oh, you know, we're gonna kill them. Like that's that this this it's so fucked up. That last one, by the way, is a paraphrase of fucking Carl Rittenhouse. <sighs> story, I, I get the facts right, and then as I'm doing that, I come. Yeah, white women know this, and there is a long storied history of white women murdering black people over this. It is fucking disgusting. Fucking disgusting. You are disgusting. Anna. Across the New York Times, you fucking video, which was a really, really well done video that they posted on YouTube that showed you in, in slow motion, like how everything transpired that night. Mm -hmm. And once you see it for yourself, it's really, really difficult to argue that in those moments he was not acting in self defense. And right. this is an area where you know Jake and I disagree because you know if if someone's hitting you over the head with a skateboard. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh shit, we're into Carl Rittenhouse already. Like this is not even ten minutes into the interview. Okay, so Carl Rittenhouse killed uh, people. Uh, he he. It was it, it 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 in my personal opinion, uh, it was pre premeditated. Um, the the video footage of him premeditating uh, the murder of uh, black right black black uh, BLM protesters, um, of which there is video footage. Like, oh, I'm going to show this again because this is all you need to know about Rittenhouse. This this needs you you this this is all you need to know. I'm sorry. Bro, I wish I had my AR. I'd start shooting when he said that. What was that? What what was that, Kyle? What was that, Kyle? Fifteen days. Bro, I wish I had my AR. I'd start shooting rounds at them. I'd start shooting rounds at them. That's what he said. 
Supposedly. I'm sorry, but like, to me? Like, yeah. So, murder by self-defense, uh, that's, I guess, what I'm calling it, uh, is a way that white people have, a thing that white people have done, wait, Hmm. There was a YouTube, there was a murder by self-defense, um, that JCS did, like, I mean, fuck JCS anyway, like, the, the whole, um, psychological analysis of, uh, uh of, of that sort of stuff is, is fake. Um, ba-da-ba-ba-da, ba -da -ba -da. Ba -da -ba -ba -da. Ba -da -ba -ba -da. red tree courses, where is JCS? There was one where the guy... Where is he? What happened? Whatever happened to JCS? Am I thinking of the wrong one? No, this was it. Yeah, it was definitely a JCS video. Hold on, I'm sorry, I'm going on a bit of a tangent here, but like... Da -da 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 -da. <clears throat> Um, the case itself is an example of murder by self-defense. No. 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 This one? Yeah, this is it. I'm pretty sure this is it. Could be it. It might not be. Ever through the windshield and engaged with her at this moment. Hmm. Basically, what it was, it was a it was a case in which a man um, uh, had a gun um, and goaded someone into attacking him so that he could kill them. Like that that is what um, murder by self defense is. It is putting yourself in a position to be attacked in order to justify the murder of other people. And to me, to me, this, this. While it was dismissed in court by that fucking judge, um, that tells me everything I need to know about Carl Rittenhouse. And, like, there is no other debate. I don't care whether American law says that he was is not a murderer. I do not care. The fact that this boy decided to take a weapon into a place he knew that he might be attacked is the problem with this. Yeah, it was self-defense, but that was the point. That was the point. Fucking hell. Murder by self-defense. Fucking educate yourself. You know, Holy so, shit. You know, Cenk is a very, he's a strong-minded person. And Danger Ground is used as self-defense while you, you know, being the act of assaulter with literally calling people to he murder he them and still threat, claiming they're in self-defense because there was, yeah, murder by self-defense. Guy who can, like, defend himself um, against someone who's, like, hitting him over the head with a skateboard as he's lying on his back. So once I saw all those details, First of all, I had to... The framing of this as well, like, do you think there might be a reason why people wanted to disarm a fucking person with an AR-15 that is, like, causing a ruckus? Maybe? 
Maybe there's a reason? Maybe? To my Fuck you, and people. be honest about what the what the reality was. The other thing was, you know, there was a lot and, of and 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 this idea that somehow her reporting is honest and unbiased. How just, yeah. was in possession of oh, by the way, like I don't know if I'm going to have the time to go through all of this. So if there's any timestamps that you want me to go but to, just let weapon, me know. And that he crossed state lines with that <laughs> oh, no. Okay, yep. so that was a lie, and it's not a lie that I just made up in my mind, right? That was how it was reported initially, which is why I would mention the state lines, but not because, oh, how dare he cross state lines? Anyone in this country has the right to cross state lines. It was because it was reported that he was in possession of an illegal gun, right. and he traveled across state lines with an illegal gun, which is a serious charge. But it turned out that he did not travel across state lines with that yeah, weapon. Yeah, he didn't he do that. Yeah, the weapon right. was in in the area already. Yeah, exactly. He bought it from a friend. This is a two hour, two and a half Sitchin hour interview, interview the by the way. Event. Yeah. I mean, maybe a day afterwards, Sitch and I were watching those videos online as they were breaking out, and I. Just that was a pivotal moment for me because, again, I, misinforming the audience is not something I have any interest in. And I might give them the facts and they might not like it, but I can't withhold information from them because I'm afraid that they might not like it. So I'm going to mm -hmm. give them the facts. But, you know, I've learned to be better about, first of all, the, the sources I trust. I make an effort to just be cognizant of the filter bubbles we all exist in, the filter bubbles I exist in. And I've broken through that yeah. a little bit. Yeah, no, I agree. You know, look at other sources but that like, I like, wouldn't have looked at. And then the other thing that all I of that is beside I the point. When the, the deeper point is that it was, uh, it, in my personal opinion, uh, it was murder by self defense. That's what it was. You know, I think the story involving the so called. Which is an established thing. I don't know if it's called that. But that's what I fucking call it. City by Karen is a good example of that. The main show, because TYT consists of many different shows, right? The show that I'm the executive producer and host of is the main flagship show, The Young Turks. Mm -hmm. And prior to that story breaking, I had a meeting with my team and I was like, listen, exactly. I don't want you guys pitching stories about random individuals wanted to kill in the country people. who are caught in an out of context video allegedly behaving badly. I, I think these stories are divisive. I don't think we usually have the full details before we talk about these stories. And honestly, at the end of the day, engaging in these witch hunts is actually causing more division and hate in the country than anything else. So like, if there's a story that's particularly like jarring and you guys really do want to cover it, that's fine. But just understand that we are going to wait. Like we are not in the business of breaking news. I don't give a shit about being the first uh, in reporting the story or whatever. I want to make sure that when we do, we actually report it correctly and we don't have egg on our face later. Now there are a bunch of other shows on the network that I have no say over, that I have no control over who, you know, inaccurately reported on it Good. and uh, had to issue retractions. They had to take videos down and all that stuff. And I just think that was a teachable moment, hopefully a teachable moment for everyone in the company. But certainly, you know, this is an ongoing conversation I have with my team. And luckily, I don't know how I did it. I feel like I found unicorn producers because they're really smart, super open-minded. You know, they're less interested in this left versus right or partisan garbage. And they're more interested in making sure that if we're going to report stories, we get it accurate. Um, and so we're, we're moving slowly but surely in a direction that I think is better, not just for the show, but I think better in terms of like what we add to society hmm. like the last thing i want to do is be the other side of right-wing disinformation right like if we're going to be critical of disinformation we see happening in various videos and that are produced by other people we should at you are spreading right-wing disinformation we look inward like... a little bit and make sure that we're doing our due diligence yeah wait it's, what know, tweet was that how uh with the media a lot of misinformation comes from way back machine leave stuff out and I, that's been mm -hmm. my experience too just this intentional leaving out of key information or so like the headline or the subsection will kind of frame something in a very specific way. So even when you get to like kind of the contradictory information, your mind is already like made up by that point. So it doesn't yeah. matter. Um, and so it leads to this kind of effect where like once a person see like once that story hits that like you or me or anyone because I kind of went to the same experience where like once something hits me in a specific way, like it's like I'm oh I'm free of the matrix. Suddenly I'm starting to see like things a little bit differently. All the dominoes kind of start to fall. And I say oh wait I start to see like where all the misinformation is coming from. Was the totally. was the Rittenhouse thing like was that like the key moment or was there something else that kind of like oh. made you shift your <laughs> shift your thinking? So that was one of the pivotal moments, but mm -hmm. honestly, I would say... So someone had tweeted, it, tweeted out a segment of this show, right? Okay. Everything for me started when I started getting gaslit on the crime wave. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's really interesting. Fuck off with gaslighting. Seriously, cri on the crime wave. Like, we know... Uh, fucking hell. Like, like I said, there are so many fucking lies in this, in this article. Like, I, it would take me fucking 12 hours to go through everything she says during this. Okay, so the crime wave. Let me try and do this one in a nutshell. In America, the cri crime inc increased over two years and uh, over 2020, 2022, and has since plateaued and is starting to go down again. Uh, that can be attributed not only to a rise of, of lead in our food due to the dis the uh, the lack of regulation surrounding food uh, in America and uh, farming. Um, and also to unrest during a fucking global pandemic event, 
which is completely consistent with what we know about uh, previous pandemics. Like that, that just happens. Uh, crime has been going down. Um, New York has like less crime now than it almost ever has. Like apart from a slight jump in the last uh, few years, a a like what was it? Uh... This is how, uh, yeah, so Motors jo jo jumped 10%, which sounds incredibly large, doesn't it? <sighs> du, 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 du. So it, it sounds incredible, like t t top 10 homicide hotspots, which um, every single one of them are in, uh, every single one of these uh, homicide hotspots are within large cities. Um, so which, which tend to be the largest cities tend to be in blue states because when you have more people in a closer amount of space, they tend to be, they tend to have, uh, more Democrat views. Like I'm not going into that. It is dishonest to say, oh, it's, it's, it's mostly blue states. Like the, there is a reason for that because large cities correlate with, um, with leftist, with more progressive values. Um, and it has nothing to do with depolicing. The police um, had there, there were unofficial over the over the twenty twenties, early twenty twenties. Uh, there were un, a lot of unofficial um, police uh, strikes in which police would refuse to actually do their reporting. It's not a lack of police; it's just a uh, perceived lack of police because they're not doing their fucking jobs. Um, do do do. Uh, we're looking at and then they haven't even put this on there. How fucking dishonest is this? Holy shit. I have to go digging for this shit. All right, 10%. 10%. Okay. We're looking for... You're looking at a increase of two in Memphis. So, yeah. You're, you're <laughs> the per capita... Um, the ca per capita uh, homicides are like increasing by number by single and double digit numbers, right? So if 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 like if last year there was one murder in my town, right, and this year there were two murders in my town, then the crime would have increased by two hundred percent. That sounds scary, doesn't it? The most interesting thing is that per capita crime has gone down, um, even even despite the increase of population growth. Like it's it, the increase of population versus the increase of crime. Like that, there, there is a negative correlation between that right now, which is quite like unprecedented in human history. <sighs> Like, I'm just going to be honest with you. There's no introduction for this, right? Now, the caption from Scarlet Red here does not accurately portray just how insane this shit, right? By the way... Scared or had, like, I'm afraid... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know this is one. I know this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I, know. I remember. I remember this. Fuck. I wish I could see it. I think I can find that. I think I can find that. Uh, But, yeah, like... That that that's the crime rate, like, and she's call she calls that um, that she calls that uh, fucking. Absolutely. Pretty sure it's here. <laughs> like you probably shouldn't do that. Tell us, no whiteness is just you know that's just neutral. And I'm like, well, I mean, it, if we were talking about criminality, pretty sure this is it here. Yeah. Blackness, don't you think people would? Yeah, crime, of... crime and punishment, law and order, uh, they're all anti-black um, dog whistles. That's what it is. And and you are either aware of that or you are a useful idiot for that. And I and Anna Kasparian is aware of that. So I don't think that she's a useful idiot. I think she's very aware of the things that she says. She thinking that's a little racist like you probably shouldn't do that so but there so many people who study this critical race theory stuff they're like you know they're working on their phd in it like they're fully invested in the system they've got some 
advisor that has studied it for 35 years. Like, you're never going to change their minds about this stuff. It's, it's kind of, I don't necessarily know where we turn on it. I mean, look, for academics who have dedicated their lives to that type of curriculum, yeah, I mean, they've dedicated their lives to it. It's pretty deeply ingrained in their minds. It's, it's kind of difficult to, to reverse that. But, you know, the whole thing hey. is I agree with CRT. Um, don't lump it, holes like, don't in with that. With that theory, I don't, you know, whatever. But my issue with the right was that they were making it seem as though CRT, which is a graduate level curriculum, is being taught in like elementary schools and stuff. And so- no, this is prefer- CRT. The stereotype. Yeah. I mean, it's just as racist to say, um, you know, black people are inherently dangerous and violent, right? That's a disgusting and racist thing to say. What's just as what racist? Exists, for sure. Do I think the majority of white people are racist? Do I think white people are inherent? All of the messages toward me and people- <laughs> Sure wanted colorblindness when that was like the, I guess, in general, the agreed upon goal. I feel like race relations were better. Like much right, better I than agree. They are yes. Today, right. Yes. So. Wait. What? Okay. Okay. We need to go to the past. This. You know, I would, this, I would this... this question. When the culture wanted colorblindness, when that was like the, I guess, in general, the agreed upon goal. I feel like race relations were better. Like much right. better. What the fuck? What the fuck? So, like, she's fucking mask off completely and utter racist. She's just a complete racist. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, you don't know where it is. Ah, Let me see if I can find a clip of it. Fucking hell, nothing but TYT shorts. Oh wow, she she one had uh, she said and did nothing wrong. Most people come to realize you're insane, and you'll be left with the vocal minority of asocial freaks online until you inevitably eat each other alive. And Shilla, what a piece of shit. Well, I guess she was lying about that shit. Fucking hell. Just I'm just looking for it, but um. Yeah, this is the the suspended one. No one else could clip it. No one else was able to clip this. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I know that, that uh, they went over it on the thing, but, like, I will fucking find this shit. What is causing the political shift? Choose not to be affected by every injustice. What has got... Anna has to go plus super chats. 
my behavior. My behavior. And so I've been kind of thinking of things through that lens. And the other thing I'll say is I have a very, luckily, a very full life. And I have many friends outside of this space, outside mm -hmm. of work. And they have really helped to ground me and give me the courage I need to do my job the way that I see fit moving forward. Because if your entire life is about this, about you know what you do, the people who surround you at work, and if it's about making sure that you maintain those relationships, then their pressure on you to say certain things that you might not believe in is going to be far more effective. And mm. so I've kind of, I, I are, are you experiencing that? For are, sure. Yeah. Are they yeah, pressuring no, no. you? Are they, are you getting eye rolls when you're saying, look, you're really kind of misrepresenting the Republican argument here? Well, look, um, they do this really great thing where, uh, they don't actually approach me privately to have these conversations. Um, they do me the favor of putting out monetized videos, condemning me for being a very naughty girl. Um, and so well, well, wait, that's, that situation yeah. though, is like detractors. I'm talking about like in a work environment, like, which would be much worse, obviously. Right. Well, uh, so far, so that's no, one's, so far no, one's, no one's approached me. No one's <laughs> approached me to tell me like, I can't believe you're saying this or, you know, I can't, you know, I'm very angry at you. No one's done that. Okay. Um, however, two people have reported me to HR. So what? <laughs> yeah. what? Yeah. You're uh, already getting reports something to specific HR. Or just... if, and if it rises to the occasion of me having to say something, I'll approach that person and talk to them about it. I would never report them to HR. Like, what are we doing here? We're yeah. doing political news and analysis. Like hey, found it. Ah, okay. So, yeah. so hey, I just learned something here, right? So if you bring up the transcript and uh, do a search term for a word, sometimes, um, sometimes you got to play around with a bit if, with it for a bit. But you can actually keyword search things uh, on transcripts through transcripts. It, it will it will actually go through the transcript on the page as well as the rest of the page. So like if you're trying to find something, so we found it. We fucking found it. Criticizing the idea that they don't think a colorblind approach would necessarily bring about you know, racial equality or whatever. Like, even if I disagree with that, I understand what they're saying. The mm -hmm. thing that's kind of frightening to me is people saying that the, the goal of colorblindness. Like, okay, so colorblindness is what um, is what MLK is talking about when he's talk when he's criticizing the the uh, white moderate. Is that we are not colorblindness just basically ignores the knife in the back it just just it, it is not admitting like sorry this is now going back to malcolm x the white the white moderate won't even admit that the knife is fucking there <laughs> i've been trans longer so i know how to use trans lips i am i i i know i i i not to talk myself up or anything, but I'm very good at finding knacks to things and figuring out shit like that. It's just boring to watch me figure it out. <laughs> but yeah, that's going to help me in the future because now I can actually search search that way. Is either I'm actually not super happy about that. Or not even desirable. And to me, that's a, a drastic shift. Like, okay, I understand you want to do things to get there, but the goal should still be kind of this liberal notion of colorblindness at the end of the day. No, no, the goal, the goal is to eliminate problems within society. And the only way to do that is to fucking shine a light on it, to admit that there's a knife in the pack. Fucking hell. Colorblindness is, is inherently racist. I'm not going to explain that shit. It's just inherently racist. You know, I would, I... Anna Kasparian is a fucking racist. I don't even need to watch much more of this, but like, I'm going question. to. When the culture wanted colorblindness, when that was like the, I guess, in general, the agreed upon goal, I feel like race relations were better. Like, much right, better I agree. Than they are yes. Today, right? Yes. So, look, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I'm. Whoa, a what's scared happening to my like, fucking. I'm afraid of like talking to people who are outside of my race because I don't know if I'm going to unintentionally step in it. Right. right? Yeah. <laughs> like, there's, yeah. there's an. Here we go. Oh, sorry. Shit. Okay, I fucking right, missed like that. Liberals or centrists. Here we go. When it comes to Sometimes like trans I'm issues, scared, we'll talk, like... they'll refer to trans people. Wait, fucking hell. Every time. Every time. Holy shit. I'm right, the worst agree, streamer. Yes, right? yes. So, look, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I'm a little scared or head like I'm afraid of like talking to people who are outside of my race because I don't know if I'm going to unintentionally step in it. Right. right? Yeah. Like there's, yeah. there's, and I hate that. I hate that. Right. Like th there's this like, Holy fuck. Fucking what a racist bitch. Hey, it's like a terrorist. Welcome to the stream. Race relations were better in the nineties. Like this white bitch is like, Oh, things were better when we, when we pretended that black people didn't exist and their problems didn't exist. Holy shit. Holy fuck.
The grift is real. The grift is fucking real. I'm gonna... Like, I was in the right place originally. I should have just left it. to unintentionally step in it. Just... We're better. Like, my, that was like the... Here we go. I guess, in general, the agreed upon goal. I feel like race relations were better. Like, much right, better I agree, than they are yes. Today, right? yes. So, look, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes... Just, you're just scared of losing your white woman, like, identity. You're scared of losing your position of privilege in society. Racist and transphobic. I'm, I'm a little scared or, like, I'm afraid of, like, talking to people who are outside of my race because I don't know if I'm going to unintentionally step in it, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> like, there's, yeah. there's, and I hate that. I hate that. Right. Like, th there's this, like. Yeah. Yeah, I can tell that you hate that. Fucking hell. Yeah, I can tell that you hate talking about minority issues by the way that you talk about them. Wow. Why is that not the most, re most like, replayed point? What the fuck does she say after this? Oh, it's here, like here. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! It gets worse. It gets worse. Look, look. She's going to. She's going to take off the white woman persona in order to de defend herself. Like she's immediately going to claim that she's a minority I, now. I don't know. It's like frigid, I, because like if the if all of the messages. Shoe on head is in the chat. The shoe on head is in the fucking chat. By the way. Oh, of course. Yeah, fucking hell. The woman that says she's, she's scared of black people and doesn't talk to them because she's scared of them. But wait, just wait. Just wait. But it's okay. It's okay, Nola. What noise? What's not? What noise? Like, it's okay. It's okay, Anna. It's okay. You're, uh... Oh, there might be a background. The twang. I'm not sure. Yeah, shoes. Shoe is a fucking... Oh, yeah. Hey, drop it and drop it. Drop the link. Drop the link. I'll look at that before we head off. We're like, holy fuck, though. My gosh. But yeah, it gets worse. She's about to... She's about to hide behind being Armenian now. Toward me. And people who, you know, I'm Armenian, but still, they call me white passing, so, you know, just gotta go with that, right? <laughs> People who look like me are constantly told, you are inherently racist, okay? You are inherently a bad person. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry, like, you're not inherently racist or inherently a bad person. Like, you just, you, you are those things because of the things you say as well. You benefit from racism, you benefit from systems that prop you up. But you are also transphobic and racist. This this whole fucking thing is fucking racist as I mean, fuck. Holy start, shit. I had this debate with Jenk when it came to our rhetoric in regard to the other side, right? If the starting off point is you are trash and we think you're evil. Yeah, then totally. how, how, how does that, you're never going to move in a better direction. You're not going to move the country in a better direction. You're not going to improve race relations. You're going to make it worse. And that is what I see happening. I think a lot of the division is due to the backlash to that kind of rhetoric. And I think, that, look, I think racism exists for sure. Do I think the majority of white people are racist? Do I think white people are inherently w racist? No, I do not. I think that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I thought you were, I thought that you were Armenian. What do you know about white people being racist? Holy fuck. I'm a completely mis a complete misunderstanding of all of this shit. Was there anything else? Was there anything else? Did anyone do a fucking, th did anyone do a thread on this shit? So I would love to. I would love to have the time to go through every like two and a half hours of this, but still. Is the red pill metaphor, oh. but mm -hmm. he he says you know we're all kind of living in these moral matrixes where totally. you know, we're not interacting with other people in other matrices. But when people talk about being red pilled, a lot of people just talk about well I got out of the the progressive matrix and I moved <laughs> into the conservative matrix now. And I think well you did, like in the movie they left the matrix. Yeah, like so I I didn't realize how fucking racist it was, but like fucking hell. All right. Yeah, I, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Fucking done. Like, uh, what else? What else can I fucking say? Which hasn't been say, said already. Like, say it already. Fucking hell. I'm gonna test this out again. E. Hey, um.
Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I need to go to the part, part that she talked about all day on me. Hold on. She, like, fucking throws Oliami out into the bus. Yeah, here we go. This, this is it. Alright, so I was talking about this at the beginning. Like, so... This is unfucking believable. Hey, Sophia. Hi, Sophia. Hey. I don't have any real time limit today yet, but I will finish up. I'm just going to double check my phone to see, make sure no one's messaged me. Been really into this today. That's cool. All right. I still want to still want to see if you guys wanted to play games later as well. Um, so yeah, she she singled out uh, Oleami Oleami. I I I I'm so sorry for my pronunciation. Like, but you said like you know don't criticize you or like talk about you unless I can say your name. I'm gonna try my best. Like she is fucking fire, Oleami. Like you should fucking you should ex subscribe to her Olurinati on YouTube. She's gonna start streaming as well so keep your eyes out but like yeah she anna throws her under the bus to a right-wing audience now i just gotta play this great um <laughs> i mean look that leftist mafia stream was unbelievable to me like the accusations that were thrown out there um away, yeah. imp implying that i'm I'm racist because as a woman okay first off anna she never called you racist she never called you racist but you are racist now oh like you i mean you were then but you are fucking racist i don't want to be called a birthing person like that has i mean race didn't come up at all until she brought it up and then she no you brought it up she, i mean she was the only one on the, this is this so like a psa for the audience Gaslighting is not when someone calls you out for things you've demonstrably said or done. Gaslighting is this. This is gaslighting who, who right now. It, and like made it abundantly clear that she's got an issue with white women and just thinks they're all the same and like, you know, whatever. <laughs> and then and then after I basically called her out on it, she's like, oh. You didn't say any of that shit. You're attacking me and only me because I'm black. And it's like, no, you're the only one attacking in that group of people yeah. who attack no, she didn't even, she, Ole didn't even talk about, like, oh, she did talk about that a little bit, but that's talking about actual, like, CRT issues. I mean, so, like, being racist because I personally want to be called a woman. So, <laughs> I mean. I'm not sure it, that they fully understand. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I just wanted to show that up first as well. Like, Anna Kasparian is a transphobe and a racist, and it's been fucking exposed now. Um, If you don't agree with me, that's cool. You're you're wrong. It's demonstrably true. She says racist things. She says transphobic things. She <laughs> she is a transphobe and a racist. And I don't usually call people that as an identity. I usually attack the things that they say and do more. But like honestly, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of I, I'm sick of it. Like we should have been calling her out as a racist and a transphobe at the time. Oliomi was right, and we need to listen to black women more often and faster. Um, that's what I've learned from this thing. Defending Rakal Rittenhouse as well. Holy shit. Hey, Chang. Good to see you. It is. Yeah. The yes, there is a long history. Like, yeah, it comes from ignorance. and But the thing is... <laughs> Anna is not ignorant. She has been reporting on these topics and she knows better. That's the thing. This bitch knows these things. It's not as if she doesn't know. She knows. She knows. She... Fucking hell. Can I find this? Oh, hey, Chang. We're talking about um, one of the largest... Uh, Progressive media outlets on the internet um, turning out to be complete and utter grifters, and and the and the leftist um, online community is just going going crazy, 
over the Schadenfreude or over the over this moment. Hey, Osa Newberg, don't call me Karen. Roast corporate media, Karen. Oh wait, was it um? Where is it? Hold on. I'm gonna see. I, I'm sorry, sorry, Lance. I'm gonna steal your uh, your uh, thing. Is uh. I just want to see if I can find I that point that. in this video, which is really good. I don't think it's this video. Hold on. It might be this one. Ah, yeah, here it is. Sorry, Lance, I'm stealing you. I'm stealing your thing, but like, support the original creator. Oh, hand surgery. Fuck. I'm sorry to hear that. I hope that I hope that you're okay. Damn, getting paid? Getting paid. Time to start up a stream. Make a podcast. Do a podcast. They've determined this isn't the law of the land. Uh, we're not going to touch it. First thing they do is they reverse it, of course. Uh, so they were going to uh, explore that. Very important issues, especially in the new climate that we're living in where a 10-year-old gets raped in Ohio, gets pregnant as a result of that rape, and has to travel out of state to Indiana to get an abortion. Okay, so this is an important issue. And bad faith right-wing culture war manufacturers like Josh Hawley decide to hijack this important hearing to, of course, create more content that they can use to campaign on. That's what this was about. And I think the way that uh, Kiara Bridges, who's the uh, expert uh, testifying there, the way she handled it was, I, I think it was fantastic. I can't find it. Because she dismissed, she, she was informative, but more importantly, she dismissed him. And he, along with other Republican lawmakers, deserved to Wait, something ironic. You'd asked me about the surfs because I kept seeing it recommended, but you remembered it as that you misremembered it as surfs and you warned me against it. Wait, what was that? What did I warn against? What? Now I'm confusion. Now I have to know. Oh, let me do the thing again. Wait. Oh, there's no closed captions. I can't search. No. <laughs> This one does. Yeah, swerfs are anti-sex workers, yeah. But the serfs, the serfs are are, are, are based. They are pro-sex worker. Um... Not this one, then. That's the thing, I did see, I did see, um, like, the, there's a mega compil compil compilation of, like, Anna on the, yeah, we're like, being, gonna go talk to him tonight. talking about, like, being worse, but I don't know, I need to find this. Ah! No, it wasn't this one. With the paper transporn. Yes, absolutely. Or draw your own. Yeah. Damn. This is annoying to me. Like... Oh, basically, yeah. I'll move on from that, but like... I can't remember what I was even going to show. I'm so sorry. Alright.
racist. Yeah. Right? So <laughs> I did not call her. Ra- I never called her racist. And none of that is what happened at all. Now, what happened is when you attack me on Twitter and you're trying to perpetrate like you are something that you are not and you are mobilizing hatred towards me. What I did was share a video of you saying the fucking N word a million times. Now, if you extrapolate a, a compilation of you saying it to mean that, because that is what one would think about a white person who does something like that, then that's on you, baby girl. But I didn't say that about you. But more importantly, I want to say this. There's this need and this desire, like what, like not just white, not white people or all white people, but obviously what racists in the side of the aisle like to do is you think that because you live in fear of being called a racist or something, or like you think you can like shame me, oh the race car or because I'm black or something, like oh I'm gonna I'm gonna quiver if I were to call somebody racist. If I call you racist, it's because I believe you're racist and I'll put my whole back back into it. I don't give a. F- She's fucking brilliant. I lo- I love her. Yeah, here we go. And about you, how dare she criticize you or, or or call you that? And also, I will say this, and I and I said it early on last show. I had never called you a racist, but I'll call you one now because I definitely, first of all, everything everything that has come out of your mouth in the last year that I have been privy to the work that you do and from you and Jank is some racist propaganda, foolishness, some absolutely destructive bullshit. That's one. But two, you think it's lost upon me that you singled out the black woman here? Like you think you think I think that that is a mistake? You think, I think that a white woman that used her platform to be just doing all of these things and saying whatever and saying the N-word on wax, you think I think you're not? So I don't have a problem with that. You could tell them I said you're racist. I think you're racist. I think you're a transphobe. I think you're disingenuous. I think you have no integrity. And I think your show is whack. I don't think, like, Liami said it better than, like, I can. Like, that that's just how it is. Like, Anna, you are a racist, you're a transphobe, and, um, fuck you for singling out the one black woman who, uh, decided to put her head up and call you out for being a transphobe. Yeah. That's basically all, all, all I can say about that. I don't know. Um, where are we at from now? But, like, even rushing down, uh, Anna's tweets, right? The movement made a point to be non-violent. The violence used against them is what changed hearts and minds. That is a rewriting of history. That is straight out of the right wing. Um, oh, sorry. That that this is straight straight out of the right wing um, playbook. Like this is uh, the rewriting of history in order to make uh, to to um, what is it? Uh, respectability politics. You know. Oh, you're too loud. You're too angry. You're too violent. Wait, I, for one thing, the BLM protests were less violent than the were less demonstrably less violent than the civil rights movement was. So, for one, go fuck yourself on that on that uh, measure. Not only are you lying about the the BLM movement uh, and the trans rights uh, movements, um, you're also trying to rewrite history so that. Um, it looks like uh, white. It, it, this is it, basically. White people gave you rights, so you should thank us for it. That's what this is. That's what this fucking is. White people gave you rights, and we get to we get to get have take the fucking um. We yeah, it changed hearts and minds. The violence used against them was about, about what part of what changed hearts and minds. Like changed whose hearts and minds? Like white people's, like. <laughs> As if white people were the ones who got to choose whether people had rights or not in the start. It is, it comes from the roots of white supremacist thought. Yeah, no, yeah, white people just suddenly realized that segregation was bad. Yeah, no, it wasn't the riots or anything that happened in the wake of that. Ugh. Your argument wasn't that someone would call me that. Try again. Like, this is, this, this is gaslighting. What? What? Her I. She doesn't know who Ollie London is. Fucking hell. Like, she's so fucking stupid. Yeah, like, I don't know who that is. Bullshit, Anna. Wait, what?
An influencer. <laughs> Fuck off. Two years. Two years ago. An influencer has come out at definitely this moment where you feel like I don't know what to think about this. Like I I I relish those moments. But you don't know who you don't know who uh, Ollie London is. You don't know who Ollie London is. What a lying fucking bitch. What a lying bitch. Like when Lee Fong was reporting on the BLM protests, uh, for he was when he was accurately reporting on the BLM protests and some of the violence that took place during those protests. Uh, his own call. That bearded white guy is spending uh, his Twitter time defending Anna. Yeah. All right, let's see how long it can take me before I find the transphobic shit. Hormone surgery. The trance is a fraught, and there are no easy answers by Jesse Singal. Claire is a 14-year-old girl with short auburn hair and a broad smile. She lives outside. Blah, blah, blah. She quickly opens up. She is a bit overscheduled. During the mother, these aren't their real names. We all discussed the fact that until recently she wasn't certain she was a girl. Do, 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 do. Miles Chronicles, a charismatic 22-year-old. Oh, yeah. I think I remember them. I recommend they gave her name to Claire's Discomfort. She was transgender. Gaining access to drugs that would halt puberty. Next, she would take start taking... I thought that was what made you feel better. They thought she was a boy. They told Claire they loved and supported her, but they stopped short of encouraging her to transition. Uh, da -da, child free of tender dysphoria. Self had self diagnosed as dysphoria. Wait. So they didn't even find her a therapist until she was a teenager. What the fuck? What the fuck? So he's like talking about he's talking about someone who was a child who wasn't given like the care that they needed at the time and so were confused for a very long time. This could have been ironed out quite quickly by going to a specialist and talking about these issues, but okay. Um do, 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 do. She was insistent that she wanted both testosterone and a top surgery, double mastectomy. We took her kayaking board games. We took her ability to search online, but gave her Instagram as a consolation. So, like, yeah, this is whitewashing con con conversion therapy. Like, yeah. Read this expecting to disagree and a donor's actually balanced and compassionate study of the issues. No, it, like, it, it's, it, that's, that's what it's designed to look like. Fucking hell. Therapists are expensive or is believed to be expensive. True. True. Anyway, uh, that was the what, last that we were going to talk about. That there was the, I want to look at the stuff that you, the Twitter thread quickly. I can define intersectional feminism. I think so. Isn't it like feminism is for everybody? Brown people, black people, normal people. <laughs> Not even fucking 10 se Oh, sorry. That's 11 seconds. <laughs> fucking hell. Fucking into a gas station. Thank God. We are in the middle of black, black land. People. No offense, it's like black people, but you know, they have the reputation. And ask her where we are. Mexican no, people. No, no, just, just say, what it like? Feminism is for everybody. Mexican no, people. No, black people. Yeah, fucking hell. Actually got permanently banned from Twitter. The excuse they were using is that he was exacerbating the, an already out of control situation. Yeah, you can't control your. Oh shit, that's right. That's a uh, fucking armored skeptic. Fucking oh, hell. And his tweets He's a laugher as well. I thought that was just his just... thing. Oh, he did imply that she was a man, but 
She looks like a man. She looks. That's she's not racist. Ugly. She's just ugly. She's yeah, it's ugly. not racist. First of all, she looks like. <laughs> and let me let me go on. I look like a pony gelfling who. That's not racist against white people. And I look like people. a god. That's not racist to say. My no, you're a cracker ass hoe. That's what you are. Look at Fuck. all these beautiful buildings, right? Look at all that that classic architecture, that good. And then you got that eyesore. Oh, and that eyesore is the African American History Museum. Is it? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> get that! Get that! Get that. Holy moly! Damn! Damn! Okay. Sean had clips. That was on her own clip. Is that her own clip Twitter as well? Yeah, cut that out. Nope, clip it and put it on on display. Fucking hell. Daily reminder, Black Lives Matter is black supremacy trash. Wow, good. Good, nice. Good stuff. Fucking hell. Uh, at this point, you have to be in serious denial to think BLM is anything more than racist supremacists and AIDS Skrillex is filled with guilt. I don't get that. I don't understand what she's saying there. Uh, racist hate group. Wow. Okay. Yep. No. Nah. Does she actually drop any fucking receipts, or does she just make claims? <sighs> Bloody hell. Directly supports supremacy. I never considered a difference of opinion in politics and religion in philosophy as a cause for withdrawing from a friend. Well, I mean, that's great for you to have that fucking awesome... Ah, thoughts on Lauren Southern. Bay, to be honest. Okay. Wow. Enjoy having Twitter discussions. What the fuck? Lauren has crossed from internet friend to IRL friend at this point, because you'll eventually live in Canada, they'll probably hang out a lot. Holy shit, okay. Ugh. Lauren Southern is a white supremacist, by the way. I don't know if she's still living here, but she was in Australia last time I checked. Ugh. Less than two years ago, I've unnaturally changed my mind. What the fuck? Yeah, she's you're still a cracker hoe. Fucking hell. Does that mean anything? Is our president black? Does that mean anything? Is our president an African American? Do white people elect a black man president of the United States? Are black men incarcerated the, more than white, the white people for the same crime? Did the white population elect a black man president of the United States? Are black men white. incarcerated for the same crime? Black white lives, people white at a lives, rate. yellow lives, red lives, all lives equal. Women's lives, male lives. No lives are better than anybody else's life. But are, right? are black people incarcerated at no, a higher rate than white people your for the same time? Black, black lives are. matter. Because white, they have do to white lives that. matter? White lives matter to okay. the criminal justice system. Yellow lives matter? Not always. Do red lives matter? they had the Chinese Exclusion Act, so they no, didn't no, matter. That's that. Now. And now we now, are incarcerating black people equal. at a higher rate. No, not to the criminal justice system. Oh, they don't? Absolutely. No. They don't. Really? That's why we're out here saying black but lives matter, you, because you, they you, don't. You, you have that right to do that. But when I see that, that's offensive. This is because offensive. You're based it's offensive because you're a white supremacist. Oh my gosh. People in the TL... On the TL timeline, uh, trying really hard to make Rittenhouse look cringe or whatever. The Rittenhouse uh, was a piece of shit. Holy shit. I'm unable to view this tweet. This this tweet. Wait, am I am I am I blocked from fucking? Why would why would I be blocked from um from uh? Hold on, let me just I just really want to see this. Hold on. No. Oh no, she's not blocked. Oh, that's not her. Wait a second. Shoe on head. Oh, with a zero. Two. That one there. No, I'm still there. She's still there. I, I thought it maybe it was, but... Who is this person? 
by Babylon. Or they limited their account. Ah, oh, they've protected their account. Moving on. How are they recently? Simp. Got a shoe on head. Simple tweets by feds. Oh yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not changed at all. Didn't take long. Didn't fucking take long, eh? Ah, oh, fair enough. That's cool. But yeah, fucking hell. Yeah, yep. Shoe on head. Still a racist. Still a fucking racist. Intelligent outfits. Why the fuck do they hate femininity so much? And intelligent outfits. Fucking hell. Why do they hate femininity? Why? Why is that femininity? Wait. Am I muted? I shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. No, I'm not as far as I know. Vas! Oh. Gosh, I think that that is all I can handle for today. That was a lot of fun. Thank you for watching. Um, yeah, so to recap, uh, Cenk and Anna and TYT, I guess, are transphobic. Um... That's just how shit is now. They're transphobic and uh, white supremacist uh, bullshit. But that that's that's what progressive liberals are. They are just white people who are in position, or and or people who are in elevated positions of privilege who uh, don't consider that other people might have problems in life and would wish. Would prefer that people stop talking about their problems so that they can uh, go on to, I guess, win elections somehow in a country that I don't live in. Um, yeah. Uh, fuck you, Cenk. Fuck you, Anna. Uh, Hassan, I hope that you call them out for this shit directly because uh, it's not just a family issue at this point. Uh, but yeah. Subscribe to Ollie Amy. Um Yeah, that thread thread was based. Fucking no, but the thing is though, Nola, you could all you need to do is spend about five seconds on her on her uh timeline and it's just it, it you scroll down once or twice and she's posted something racist like <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, this is exhausting. But fun. I had fun. I hope everyone else had fun. Uh but remember like a lot of this stuff is outside of your control, so don't, like, beat yourself up about changing the world, because you're not going to, and that's okay. Uh, you can only, you know, affect change on the things that you can touch with your two hands, so focus on the people that really matter. Don't waste your time on trying to change the minds of people that will not be there for you when you need them. Um, and until we see each other again, take care of yourself, take care of yourself, and take care of someone else. Yes, pizza rolls. I need to find those. I'll see if I can find them by next time. Bye-bye.